um, the purpose of the meeting is to uh, get a briefing from the Department of uh, Trade, Industry and Competition on the annual performance plans 2023, uh, 2024, as well as the budget. Um, as you know that uh, we are supposed to have met with the uh, department uh, two weeks ago, but uh, due to the absence of uh, uh, the executive, uh, the meeting was uh, then canceled. Uh, and then we rescheduled it for today, for this morning. Um, without wasting any time, let me hand over then to the deputy minister, uh, Majola. Over to you, DM. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Chairperson, uh, and uh, good morning. Firstly, good morning to you, and uh, welcome back. Uh, uh, happy to have you back, um, um, honourable members uh, and officials from the both the Parliament and Department. Honourable uh, Chairperson, in fact, in, I'm uh, I'm sitting somewhere. In Jackass Fontaine, we've already started the, the meeting of the deputy president that asked that uh, we should uh, join the meeting now by between 10 and half past 10 before the minister gets here. Uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but uh, uh, we, we, we hope for, for your understanding. So um, I, I, we, um, I think uh, we maybe should yeah, with your permission, we should just go straight. The acting director general is here, is going to lead the presentation. So I would like with your permission that we give over to, to her. And uh, I will not leave until the minister joins, uh, joins the committee. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable Dear. Uh, Ms. Mabija Thompson, over to you. Uh, good good morning, Chair, and uh, good morning to the uh, members. Um, Chair, we will be taking the committee through the annual performance plan. Um, in terms of um, our presentation, I'll just uh, ask Solo um, if he, she could just kindly um, share. And while she's doing that, I will introduce um, the DTIC team. Uh, of course, the DM uh, is here, DM Majola, um, and uh, the minister will be joining um, uh, shortly. Um, I am joined by a number of DDGs here. I'll just quickly go through uh, the names. Our chief economist, uh, Stephen Hannival, our um, head of uh, incentives, uh, Susan uh, Mangole, um, our head of uh, operations, Nondombi Madomela, our head of strategy, Wongi uh, Masbangise, um, our CD responsible for trade, Elizabeth uh, Van Rienen, uh, our DDG responsible for um, internal administration in the department, Sarah Chwani, DDG responsible for uh, regulations, Dr. Evelyn Masoja, a DDG responsible for exports, Dr. Uh, Ms. Uh, Lerato Mataboche, and uh, our acting uh, CFO, uh, Irene Ramafola. And I also understand um, that uh, Mpo from the CFO's office is also on the line. Um, Ms. Liesel Reinecke, um, currently assisting um, in, the, in the trade branch, uh, Dr. Nimrod Zalk, who's heading our sector work, and uh, Mr. Sadiq Jaffa, um, who's also um, here on behalf of uh, Yunus uh, Hussein, who heads the investment and special industrial development. And then uh, Ms. Tanya Van Mielis, who's uh, responsible for transformation and, econo and, um, and competition. So um, as the chair and members can see, we are a full house, uh, wanting to ensure that uh, we um, give um, the, 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 the committee uh, 
as much information as possible. And uh, all of us as a team also hear firsthand some of the concerns that um, the committee uh, may want to bring across. Uh, Chair, in terms of the outline, um, the report covers the annual performance plan of the department for the period uh, 2023-2024. And we've organized the presentation into 10 sections. The first one will just deal with introduction and context, and then we will go into a reimagined industrial policy and strategy, um, the role and evolution of our APP, our annual performance plan uh, over time. We'll look at um, the core outputs uh, that have now been included in this APP as new core outputs. Um, uh, we'll look at all outputs, um, which are part of this new uh, APP. Um, we will uh, look at our implementation plan, look at cross-cutting issues, um, including gender and uh, spatial interventions. Um, APP and the DTIC group look at risks, assumptions, and partnerships that we know will be necessary for us to implement the APP. And then, of course, uh, just a short look at our own um, financial resources uh, to do the work. So in terms of the context, Chairperson, I'll move straight to that slide, so thank you. Um, our APP is uh, responding to a number of, uh, of issues. First and foremost, we are mindful that um, the energy challenge uh, has a serious effect on the whole of the economy. And it is important that we adjust our plans uh, to also see what it is that the DTIC can do to help in the resolution of the uh, energy challenge. Then, of course, we are responding to a rather sluggish economy and um, an economy that uh, needs to create jobs and do so quite urgently. We're responding to a global um, economic uh, context that's characterized by slow global growth, but we are also looking at some of the opportunities that may arise from some of the green shoots, including the African uh, trade and uh, also new sectors uh, that the DTIC is envisaging to go into. Uh, we're doing this in the context of big shifts big uh, geopolitical uh, shifts and, of course, technology shifts and uh, what um, uh, has now become a concern for many uh, here at home and in the global arena in terms of uh, climate change. So um, the totality of these is what our APP is seeking to respond to. Then um, the number of, uh, of uh, um, uh, platforms um, that we are using in order to respond uh, to um, the challenges as I've set them out. Um, I did indicate that we will look at our industrial policy um, uh, with this um, accompanying uh, strategy. And here what we are uh, communicating to the committee is that South Africa has um, an industrial uh, policy, an industrial strategy, and that industrial strategy is uh, geared towards promoting industrialization with higher levels of growth and investment. We want to overcome the core social economic challenges of deep levels of inequality and joblessness, and these uh, uh, changes uh, all require disruptive and far-reaching structural changes in long-standing economic uh, patterns. Uh, at the same time, the changes um, wrought by the uh, pandemic, uh, slower international uh, trade growth and heightened tensions among major economies are profoundly changing the context with which we are going to be required to implement this policy. What do we mean by industrial uh, policy? Again, uh, we are just uh, reiterating some of the specific areas that we will be uh, looking at. Um, here, when we refer to industrial policy, we're looking at efforts by the state to shape sectoral allocation. 
um, of the economy and uh, promote a structural transformation uh, by targeting uh, specific industries, firms, and economic activities. And as you can see in the slide, we start uh, indicating in which areas uh, our focus is going to be in. Um, this uh, includes um, both uh, firm uh, focused measures and general efforts uh, to improve economic performance. And uh, in the area of infrastructure, um, our industrial policy uh, focuses on shaping uh, infrastructure and supply chain logistics to ensure that the output of emerging manufacturing industries can move uh, cheaply and quickly between our own uh, country and uh, between the, the within our own country and uh, between countries uh, and from uh, production centers to various markets. Uh, innovation and R&D, as well as technology policies that deepen local uh, technology base, especially by diffusing production and product innovation on a large scale and to address climate change concerns. Um, this policy must look at um, education skills and help in increasing uh, productivity by putting in place productivity policies that identify the best ways to empower workers and entrepreneurs. Um, it looks also at competition policies that simultaneously improve market access and act against abuse of market power, not as um, um, as aims in themselves, but as tools to promote empower, um, employment and uh, industrial uh, capacity in the country. Um, this policy also looks at a, a, a trade um, that integrates market, creates a critical mass and economies of scale while maintaining space for new industries to emerge specifically uh, on a regional uh, basis. Uh, macro policies that ensure stability and competitive uh, exchange rate and financial policies that ensures access to finance at affordable terms, even by small and uh, medium uh, enterprises. And members would already see that um, we are looking at this um, industrial policy, not just as an intervention of the Department of Trade and Industry, but an overall coordinating mechanism within government that helps us to push uh, towards a singular goal. An industrial policy to address um, the economic structure of the of the of the um, the, 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 the South African economy is quite critical. And what we are saying in this slide, a chairperson, is that uh, research done by international and local agencies have pointed to the constraining effects of uh, economic structure on growth and its negative distributional effects. By structure, we refer in Telia to unusual large income and wealth disparities. Um, if you compare our own country with uh, other uh, partner uh, countries, um, high levels of joblessness, low savings and high consumption levels, the associated high levels of economic concentration in product markets with a weak, small and medium uh, business sector, a trade structure that still relies on significant export of raw materials and importation of capital, high valued uh, and uh, consumer products, a high carbon intensive uh, economy and an over-reliance on a few geographic areas as uh, market uh, areas for our own uh, locally produced um, products. Now changing uh, industrial policy, which is on uh, slide seven, here we're saying changes to our domestic needs and international uh, shocks. There, 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 there are four areas there. 
um, which just shows how uh, our own interventions um, have changed and uh, grown uh, over time uh, from the COVID pandemic and supply chain um, uh, disruptions, extraordinary uh, fluctuations in ex uh, export markets, uh, growing geopolitical tensions, it had, as I indicated earlier, persistent and deepening challenges facing the, the national grid. So uh, the reimagined industrial uh, strategy aimed to focus more clearly on strategic value chains, including promoting localization and sector master plans, ensuring that more South Africans benefit directly from industrialization and processes that are related to industrialization through job creation and more broad-based ownership um, of uh, businesses, uh, promoting the legal and other modalities uh, required to increase trade within Africa through the AFCFTA or the Africa Continental uh, Free Trade Area. Uh, this industrial policy uh, really uh, is part of a number of interventions that had been put in place. And that includes the National Development Plan, the New Growth Path, Industrial Policy Action Plans, and um, Economic uh, Reconstruction and uh, Recovery Plan. Um, expanded uh, aspects uh, that um, we had set out in prior years um, in three areas, uh, the DTIC had indicated important uh, statements that lifted out the important areas of work that we believe are, are going to be key in order for us to deal with the, some of the challenges uh, in the economy. The first one is the localization uh, for, for jobs and industrial growth, uh, trade policy for industrial development and um, employment um, growth, and the competition policy for jobs and industrial development. And all these statements uh, were issued in May 2021. And and um, the work of the department has really moved uh, in order to ensure that these areas are prioritized. The aim of um, the, in the industrial policy, and we would see that uh, some of uh, these aims were already now filtering through into our own planning processes on how we arrange work within the department. So in 2022, the DTIC introduced three APEX outcomes to consolidate the efforts of all programs within the department and all entities uh, of the DTIC group. These APEX uh, outcomes are industrialization. Here, the aim is to promote uh, job creation and ra raising uh, incomes. It's transformation to build a more inclusive uh, economy. Uh, members are fully aware of um, the state of inequality in our country and therefore the importance of us looking at uh, industrialization as an important pillar to push transformation as well in the work that we do. A capable state to ensure improved impact of public policies. Their introduction, uh, the introduction of these three um, a big outcomes uh, was aimed at uh, introducing a focus, improving coordination, aligning resources, and increasing implementation efficiencies um, in the department. And these three outcomes were really the three core themes um, that um, were um, that characterized our, our APP for the year 2022, uh, 2023. The pillars to support uh, these uh, three outcomes, uh, there were three APEX outcomes, uh, which had seven and uh, so six underlying uh, pillars that reflected the core aims of our reimagined industrial strategy. One was to combine growth with transformation. And again, the the important point that we have to keep making that we don't have to choose between the two um, that we can grow in a way that helps transform and include more people in the manufacturing and related services uh, of the economy. 
Number two was to boost local production. And here, that is the reason why you would hear us talking more and more about the need, particularly of companies here in South Africa to buy more from uh, products um, that are produced in South Africa for the government to also buy more for, for, uh, of goods that are produced here, because that's about the only way that we can boost uh, local uh, production initially. And then of course, uh, the important area that is captured in number three, that is the work that we need to do to grow exports and expand African trade. Then we also, uh, focused on increasing uh, investment. And then uh, we focused also on establishing a more reliable and uh, low cost energy system while greening the overall uh, economy. And then the last uh, area of focus was uh, to grow uh, employment. Uh, the details of each of these uh, are now set out in this um, uh, new APP and um, from uh, policy to, to strategy in the, in the next slide. And here we are just indicating uh, to the committee uh, some of the work that is moving from paper and uh, really informing how the work of the DTIC is, uh, is carried out um, and how we are working within government to um, have uh, an alignment uh, that helps us to grow um, our own industrial capability in the country. So the first one is building industrial resilience and um, uh, competitiveness through workplace level support for structural uh, transformation. We're developing partnership that are based on mutual commitment from business, labor, and government. And these are set out in master plans or social compact. And members would know that we already have around seven master plans uh, that we are implementing. We are applying competition policies to address some of the structural constraints to growth, including through measures by the competition authorities to enhance SMME participation and new entrants in markets. Uh, utilizing trade policies directed to growing the industrial base with an evidence-led approach. And then what this means is that where we're looking at a policy instrument, um, uh, irrespective of who is asking for intervention, the most important thing we would be uh, focusing on is how do this intervention help us to grow the industrial base so that we can grow jobs right here in South Africa. We can grow our capability, manufacturing capability uh, right here and our uh, manufactured uh, inputs. So accessing markets through preferential trade agreements, particularly where there's um, industrial uh, complementarities, pivoting to the Africa-led trade and investment through the AFCFTA, uh, promoting economic inclusion and transformation uh, in the economy. And we've done this through measures to promote a wider pool uh, of um, industrialists, um, bringing in more black uh, industrialists in order to make sure that um, even that talent pool um, is mobilized, brought in so that they can be a source of jobs, a source of innovation and um, a source of uh, industrial development in addition to the capability that is already in place. A deeper shareholding through worker ownership uh, schemes and broader sk uh, skill space, promoting greater levels of innovation and technological development by linking research with commercialization strategies, greater levels of local procurement by the state and uh, major firms coupled with supplier development initiatives, uh, identifying and backing new sources of growth, be it in the digital economy, in uh, the green sector, uh, while retaining employment in traditional sectors and adjusting strategy to contemporary pressures, um, including implementation of measures uh, to deal with energy or local um, or our logistical uh, challenges. So the aim of um, our industrial uh, policy 
um, the South African reimagined industrial policy it seeks to deepen domestic market by growing employment, increasing productivity, and uh, undertaking other measures to improve uh, equ equity and uh, income uh, distribution and to widen the market for South African products and services through stronger focus on exports to the region and other rapid growing um, economies. Uh, members will hear that uh, I am uh, repeating um, the, the, the same points that I've made previously, again showing that what we have on paper, we are effectively um, uh, taking uh, forward. So the role and evolution of our, our, our APP, I've already spoken uh, to this, that our APP has evolved um, uh, in time. Uh, and the reason uh, for that APP evolution was to ensure that we are able to respond to uh, challenges, contemporary challenges that then present. And uh, we do so in a more coordinated manner um, in a department as big as uh, the, the DTIC. So in this slide, what we just show members is uh, from the integration with um, between the two departments, the Department of Economic Development and uh, the Department of Trade and Industry, we undertook the transition to a new combined department, bringing staff, uh, mandates, and resources together. And that was the work that we did between 2019 and 2020. And then in 2020 to 2021, we then uh, combined our APPs um, into the APP of the new department. Uh, we mainstreamed the uh, strategic direction uh, set out by the president in the inaugural state of the nation address. Um, and that uh, direction was captured in the reimagined industrial strategy. In the year 2021-2022, we then introduced shared performance indicators across all programs uh, of the department and the 18 uh, agencies um, that form part of the DTIC group. And then what we are doing now in 2022 and um, uh, 2023, um, we then consolidated um, the approach and then we introduced those three outcomes that I spoke to, industrialization, transformation and building a capable uh, state. The previous um, APPs targeted inputs and activities uh, that would have a beneficial outcome and impact on jobs, industrial output, exports, and investment. This was done because many external factors driving the outcomes were really outside the influence and control of the DTIC group. The output was often in the form of reports, and it was a criticism that members also raised, including at the time when we presented uh, our APP. So some of the external factors, of course, included the global economic uh, performance. I've spoken to that, um, the geopolitical uh, developments, various wars and conflicts that affected um, markets of our own products and uh, 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 markets from where our own producers source uh, inputs. Shock events uh, like banking crisis, the climate change uh, events, floods and droughts, and we've had our own share of that, including that which happened um, in some parts uh, of, uh, of KZN and various other areas, including in the in some parts of the Eastern Cape, and then domestic external uh, factors um, that uh, we had to be mindful of, the energy availability, transport logistics, crime, and um, issues of uh, lack of confidence uh, and perceptions of that lack of confidence coming from our own uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, in South Africa. While these factors impacted on output and outcomes, a focus on input and activities um, can distort a resource uh, allocation. And this is um, the point that we are making 
in this uh, APP. Um, so rather than uh, those actions that can help to achieve uh, uh, key outcomes being the ones that are brought uh, to, uh, to, to the fore, um, we were focusing a lot more on uh, processes that could help with achievement of key outputs. Um, the limitation with that approach uh, is that, of course, it limits um, uh, uh, our, our, our being held accountable on the impact of the use of public resources. So to address these concerns, a new high impact and outcome focused approach uh, was developed. And this is the approach that we will be presenting to members in this um, financial year as um, our new APP. We have built on the progress that we've made since I indicated 2019 when the two departments uh, merged, but a significant a new ele element that has been added uh, to our planning processes and now how we will be doing business is having meaningful outputs that more closely track the three outcomes to measure success of the work that we do. The new APP, um, the core outputs and targets, um, we've got 10 core targets that represent the real impact we aim to achieve in the economy and measure crucial indicators like local output, job creation, and uh, performance of uh, Black industrialists. While all our targets are important, these core targets are the apex priorities of the department and all programs of the DTIC are expected to uh, contribute to the achievement of these essential um, outputs. Um, the outputs are set out there at the bottom of the, of the slide. Uh, number one, um, it's uh, 200 billion in investment pledges secured uh, across the state. We're setting ourselves a target of 40 billion in additional local output committed or achieved. We're setting ourselves a target of 700 billion in manufacturing exports. Um, setting ourselves a target in manufacturing exports to other African uh, countries of 300 billion, 2.5 billion in exports of global business services uh, to the rest of the world, um, 40 billion in black industrialist uh, output, 1 uh, million jobs that are supported or covered by our master plans and various interventions of the department. 10, sorry, 100,000 jobs to be created, um, including through uh, our, our social uh, economic uh, fund uh, that helps to uh, maintain uh, people uh, in, uh, in jobs and also through various other uh, training uh, interventions. And then 23,000 jobs in black industrialist firms. And here, like I indicated, the reason we had the black industrialist uh, program um, is that we need to mobilize black producers um, in a more focused way to also contribute to the development and growth of the, of the country. And now we've set ourselves a jobs target for black industrialists uh, firms uh, that we will be supporting or working with through our various uh, um, uh, uh, interventions. Then uh, 20,000 additional uh, workers with shares uh, in their companies. And here again, uh, looking at transformation, not just being a, a, an exchange of equity, but also allowing those that are in the workplace to have um, more benefit than just a salary uh, in, 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 in being part of the, of the workplace. And uh, this is the target that we have set where we want addition, uh, additional uh, worker shares um, and uh, additional uh, workers um, that would have uh, shares in companies where they work an important part of transforming, um, including industrial relations um, in the way that our economy is structured. So the new APP, um, uh, 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 all output uh, targets, these uh, 10 core outputs are part of the 45 
uh, output and targets, which have been clustered into 12 uh, functional areas. And you would see the theme there from the very beginning of uh, our presentation uh, coming together here that the 12 functional areas include investment, uh, industrial production, exports, industrial support, transformation, jobs, energy, green economy targets, stakeholder engagements and impacts, addressing crime, red tape and state capability targets, improving the capacity and responsiveness of the state and uh, social uh, partnerships. So I'll turn now to um, outputs uh, that relate uh, to investment. Remember, I indicated to members that we are dealing with actually 45 uh, our, um, uh, outputs. So three of the 45 outputs deal directly with uh, investment. The first one, I've already set, uh, set it out that we've set ourselves a target of 200 billion in investment pledges that would be secured across the, the state. Um, 100 uh, million facilitation, um, 100, uh, sorry, investor facilitation and unblocking interventions um, that uh, will provide where an investor is stuck. One of our key priorities is making sure that from when the investment decision is made to when there's brick and, and mortar jobs created, production rolling of the production line, that period is shortened as, um, as, as much as it is possible. So we do have an investor facilitation a role and a responsibility within the department where we unblock um, any of um, uh, 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 um, challenges that could be brought in uh, to temper with reducing uh, that timeline between when an investment decision is made and when we actually see that uh, investment uh, on the ground. That's our output number 23. And then we've set ourselves a target that in this financial year, we will uh, implement uh, two new SEZs. And um, of course, this uh, target uh, is predicated on those uh, SEZs um, being uh, uh, feasible in terms of the SEZs having investors. And uh, of course, we are able to even uh, look at the potential jobs uh, that they can create. So this is not an output to create uh, two more um, white elephants, uh, as has been the, the, the criticism of um, our SEZ programs where we had initially gone in, uh, designated, and then went to look for investors. Our new approach is saying uh, we will be investment-led. So where the investment uh, is there and uh, there's potential to grow more by bringing in the additionality of a special economic zone, uh, we will move mountains to, to designate. So these are the two SEZs um, that we've now set ourselves a target. And then, of course, we want to continue the work that we do with provinces in relation to um, industrial parks. And then uh, on output uh, related to um, production and um, exports, uh, first one on industrial production, we've got two outputs um, that are linked to that. Um, 40 billion in additional local output committed or achieved. And here, what we are just indicating is that the economy is not going to grow if we don't focus on the additionality in terms of the support that we provide. And um, we're working with our partners in industry to increase the, the volume. Um, that uh, they produce to increase their own uh, output, be it uh, in, a, in the form of services, be it in the form of actual um, uh, uh, units, uh, that role of a uh, production line, but expansion of economic activity uh, at a, a firm level is an important uh, addition to growing our economy. And there we've set ourselves at 40 billion. Uh, again, um, the uh, um, the the uh, uh, um, we've set ourselves the target of um, what we will receive uh, from uh, black industrialists in terms of um, additional um, output.
achieved. And then on exports, uh, these are some of the targets I've already spoken to. The three additional ones there is output 27, 28, and, and uh, 41. Uh, there is implementation of the AFCFTA. Members may wonder why do we still put that as, a, as an output when uh, all agreements by and large have been signed. Um, we are in the process of finalizing um, the rules that link uh, to, um, to, 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 to trade actual uh, operational rules uh, to make the FCFTA work. And uh, what we've set ourselves there as a target is that at least from a South Africa perspective, a SACU perspective, because we negotiate this as part of a customs union, um, we would push so that um, we are part of those countries that will implement the AFCFTA. Then uh, 10 high impact trade interventions uh, completed and four protocols finalized under the AFCFTA. So on uh, industrial support again and transformation, um, further uh, outputs, um, output number six, seven, uh, eight, nine, and 43 that are part of our APP, uh, the support that important outcome, 30 billion in support programs administered by um, uh, or in partnership with the DTIC group. Members again here will say, we looked at your budget. You do not have 30 billion um, across the DTIC group, but what we are saying is part of the work that we need to do is to see how we can work more closely with the private sector to raise funds that can then be used uh, to support uh, industry beyond um, what uh, the DTIC uh, can do. And, um, uh, the, the localization fund that is being launched today is one such fund where through a competition settlement, we've been able to raise funds that are now going to go and support a localization in companies that are here in South Africa assisting them in various ways uh, to be able to increase their, their, their output, increase jobs, increase their exports, and also then contribute to our economic growth. Uh, output number seven is 15 billion uh, support programs to enterprises in areas outside the 15 main metros. And again here, uh, we, we are challenging ourselves. We've said many times, and uh, I think this committee is one of those committees that has challenged us on where our support goes. And now we've put it in our APP as a, a, a target that we will be going in, uh, in terms of support uh, uh, um, to areas outside the main metro, looking at enterprises, entrepreneurial opportunities that we can support, which are sustainable, which can then help us in achieving the goals that we have set for ourselves. And we are setting 15 billion uh, to do that work. Set 8 billion in financial support programs to SMMEs, uh, to women-owned um, and uh, women-empowered uh, businesses. This is not to say that this is all that will go into SMMEs. This is to say, this is only for SMMEs. So in the various other programs that we will be doing, we will still uh, be ensuring that SMME support, including when it comes to uh, market access, uh, is prioritized. Then uh, output number nine, 7.5 billion of um, uh, in financial support to enterprises in labor absorbing uh, sectors. I've already spoken about the, uh, the importance of us um, uh, prioritizing uh, labor absorption in the work that we do. And uh, in this financial year, we now have set ourselves a target in terms of the financial support that would go towards enterprises that are more labor absorbing. Promotion of a transparent and uh, just um, adjudication process for incentive application. Like in many areas, 
where um, we provide a service to uh, the, the, the public um, where there are problems and uh, people are raising issues. We do need to find a way um, to, 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 to have systems that quickly addresses uh, the, the, the issues and does it in a transparent way um, that um, people can feel that their matters were, were dealt with uh, justly. So we are putting there as an additional output, output number 43, promotion of a transparent and a just adjudication process for incentive application, which is an output that we are bringing forth um, for our APP in this financial year. Then on transformation, three outputs, uh, 800 million in equity equivalent investment program agreements uh, that would be agreed and um, administered. The equity equivalent investment program is a program that is set aside in the BEE Act that allows uh, particularly multinationals who are unable to um, diversify their, their, their equity by bringing in uh, local players to set aside funds equivalent uh, to the equity that they would have required to bring in in order to uh, transform their companies. And we use um, uh, that, 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 that program to then see how we can support more uh, Black, uh, particularly entrepreneurs, um, in uh, activities that would have been otherwise very difficult for them uh, to enter into. And one of the focus areas there is providing concessional financing because concessional financing is an important point for any new and a growing uh, business. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a growth constraint um, that we want to ensure that uh, as we are dealing with all these equity equivalent um, uh, applications, we use this opportunity uh, to address that um, because we there's not enough money in the in the state uh, to help us have the reach that we know we need to have in order to deal with this issue. There's 20,000 additional workers with shares uh, in their companies. I've already spoken to that. 10 high impact outcomes on addressing market uh, concentration at sector or firm level. And here we are just bringing in, um, in a way, the might of our competition <clears throat> legislation to bear uh, in, in helping um, us push uh, transformation and ensure that uh, market conduct is such that uh, it helps uh, particularly small uh, firms uh, to enter uh, sectors that otherwise would have been closed um, without a, uh, a competition policy that focuses on transformation. Then on jobs and uh, energy, um, I've already indicated uh, in terms of output uh, number 12, that we are setting aside 1 million uh, jobs um, that would be supported or covered by our master plan actions as a key target. And then we've got two more uh, targets that focuses on jobs. The one, uh, again, uh, I've spoken to 100,000 um, jobs to be created, uh, including through the social economy fund. Uh, some of this uh, work will be a uh, part-time or even uh, temporary job opportunities. And then 50,000 full-time jobs that we will be supporting. And then 23, thousand jobs in black industrialist firms, which I've, uh, I've already to, uh, spoken to. <laughs> Sorry, Jay. My apologies for that. And then on um, uh, energy, there are four outputs, five outputs that the department has set itself. Um, 1.3 billion, this is funding that comes from the department, which will be directed towards enterprises, including SMMEs, to mitigate the impact of load shedding through, energy res uh, res uh, through an energy resilient um, fund. Then uh, 14,000 megawatts of energy from projects uh, that will be facilitated be it um, in alternative uh, energy uh, sources, uh, solar, um, 
uh, battery uh, 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 storage and various other energy uh, sources. Uh, 550 megawatts of energy available uh, to the grid. So in terms of the uh, enterprises that we will be supporting, um, we will be looking for these enterprises to also be contributing towards uh, stabilizing our grid by contributing 550 uh, megawatts. Um, one uh, energy one-stop shop uh, uh, operational, uh, the DTIC has been given um, the responsibility uh, in addition to the one-stop shop that we have to unlock uh, investment opportunities, to unblock investment challenges. We've now been given the, the, the responsibility to now deal um, with the energy um, uh, issues uh, in relation to uh, supporting investors quickly uh, set up and uh, be able to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, contribute to stabilizing uh, the, 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 the grid. Um, and here it would be um, in areas, um, including permitting and everything else that municipalities uh, must do, um, all the, the, the various challenges um, that comes with even enterprises um, wanting to be energy uh, resilient and having to navigate through um, the various uh, legislative um, hurdles, this energy one-stop shop will be the area where um, they will be guided, they, 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 they will be given sufficient support, and we will have a number of departments um, that would help investors, uh, that would help enterprises um, to uh, then uh, as quickly as possible be able to either produce uh, energy for themselves or help with energy related um, equipment and um, components. Then um, on output number 22, expedited regulatory amendments and flexibilities uh, to promote energy efficiency, members would be aware that um, within the, the, the DTIC group, um, we've got regulatory um, agencies whose job it is uh, to, to make sure that uh, particularly consumers uh, in general uh, are, are able to um, access goods and uh, buy goods, use goods that are in line with uh, regulatory uh, standards in ways that um, will help protect them. And uh, it will help uh, protect even companies that may uh, be purchasing uh, those goods. So I'm talking here about institutions such as your South African Bureau of Standards, uh, our NRCS, um, and um, the work uh, that they do. Now we're bringing that work also here in energy, looking at energy efficient uh, products, how we can quickly bring those to standard in terms of ensuring that the standards are there to protect uh, consumers, uh, to know that when they buy a good, that good um, uh, is of a, of, a, of a standard that is agreed and uh, seen um, as, a, as, a, as a adequate and uh, the product will not harm them. Uh, um, uh, because, uh, you know, low standard uh, products are allowed to just uh, be allowed randomly in the market. So these uh, institutions have now been activated uh, to make sure that um, the standards that we require um, to, to, to protect our, our consumers, to protect the, the market in general uh, in place, including with uh, regards to energy. The DTIC Energy Action Plan Sorry, the DTIC Energy Action Plan, um, as you would see the uh, chairperson, um, uh, deals with some of the, the issues I've, uh, I've indicated, but it also captures uh, some of the, the, the other issues um, that uh, will still come as we are going through um, the, 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 the green 
um, economy and various other areas of our concern. The first is speeding up processes to accelerate private sector investment in uh, energy uh, generation. I've spoken to that. Increasing levels of private sector investment in um, uh, electricity uh, generation, enabling regulatory uh, flexibility on uh, transfer, um, transformation, enabling regulatory fl uh, flexibility in competition laws, introducing an energy resilient scheme to assist firms to mitigate the impact of load shedding, ensuring that uh, and uh, encouraging um, energy efficiency through these appropriate standards, uh, measures to protect consumers and energy users, and then interventions um, that support uh, industrialization, uh, particularly renewable energy uh, components. Then uh, output again on green economy and stakeholder uh, engagement um, for the green economy targets. There are three outputs. Um, one is a strategy and advocacy um, responding to green trade barriers. And members would be aware that we are dealing with a particularly uh, interesting uh, scenario here where uh, we are going to potentially be facing um, a, what is essentially a, a tax on our products due to the carbon intensity nature of our production uh, processes. And um, as, a, as a department, we are working um, with a number of uh, stakeholders uh, to see how we can push back as far as possible, this um, unjust uh, proposition um, that um, on top of the fact that we've agreed that we need to transform now forces uh, us into an uncompetitive state by putting a tax on our export products. And um, this is the work that we will be doing. That's why we call it uh, advocacy there, because we will be uh, uh, working with partner countries, uh, partners um, across the world uh, to see how we push back on this carbon border uh, adjustment uh, mechanism particularly with countries that themselves now have ramped up their own importation of coal. So um, that's the work we will be doing there. And then an EV strategy, EV meaning um, new energy uh, uh, vehicles, uh, electric vehicle strategy uh, that would be finalized and then a finalization of the green hydrogen commercialization uh, framework. So that 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 is the kind of the totality of the work that we will be doing as far as green economy targets are concerned. Then on our stakeholder um, engagements and impacts, I'm now on slide 20, um, 10 business fora that will be uh, hosted. And we do host this business fora with um, our uh, partner uh, countries uh, throughout uh, the world. Our aim when we do this is to increase our exports and uh, outward investment, um, we will be looking at a thousand uh, case studies of firms, of workers, entrepreneurs, professionals, uh, communities that are impacted by the DTIC measures, including 12 local film documentaries that will tell the South African uh, story. And here, it's really to um, go back and um, showcase um, the impact of our work in communities. Um, various uh, communities um, looking at the impact of the work that we do on people's lives um, and uh, using these case studies to also be a feedback mechanism on the policies that we pursue and on some of the interventions that we have put in place. So 52 um, community outreach uh, program, um, that will be undertaken by the DTIC group. And then there's uh, five um, uh, conferences and this will include the big ones that members will be aware of, uh, Goa, the BRICS. Um, we, 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 we are planning to also have uh, another black uh, industrialist um, uh, conference. We're planning to have a, a worker 
uh, uh, summit, and uh, these are some of the, the the interventions we we are we are planning to have. As far as the Black Industrialists um, and the Worker uh, um, the the Worker Summit are concerned, these are really um, important uh, national priorities where we use this. One to 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 showcase um, what has been achieved uh, so far by Black industrialists to deal with any challenges that Black industrialists uh, may be facing, to help us realign and reassess our own uh, policies uh, going forward, um, and uh, these platforms assist us to be able uh, to do that. And then we will be looking at ten successful actions completed uh, on price monitoring and excessive pricing or price gouging. <clears throat> On addressing um, crime and uh, red tape and uh, state um, capacity, um, we also have a responsibility um, in helping the country um, address the, the grey listing um, challenge. And um, we would be publishing a uh, Know Your Shareholder regulations and follow-ups uh, that are output number 24 and uh, our output 42 is a metal trading um, system um, that is uh, de developed uh, to identify stolen uh, public infrastructure entering the scrap market value chain um, going into our export uh, markets or uh, um, the uh, legitimate uh, metal um, production uh, industries. Um, and uh, in this way, we would also now be contributing uh, to addressing crime. Uh, on red tape and state capability for <clears throat> high impact measures to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the DTIC policy and program interventions. That is our output number 39. And then we've got 10 high impact measures to reduce red tape and improve turnaround times in administration of uh, incentives and work of our agencies. Uh, that is our output number 40 and output number 44 captures six impact assessments or enhancement of trade um, instruments or um, measures. Then uh, moving on to state capacity, our ability to be responsive and social partnerships that are key in driving the work that we will be doing. Uh, we have five uh, outputs there, uh, four pieces of priority legislation that would be amended and submitted to the executive um, cabinet and, uh, and, uh, and parliament, seven master plans managed and one master plan to be finalized, uh, oversight of IDC, NEF and ECIC to ensure that at least 95% of what essentially is their planned KPIs are achieved, oversight of other entities to ensure that at least 95% of their planned KPIs uh, are achieved, and then 50 measures and acquisitions where public interest conditions um, would be incorporated. Then I'll just uh, quickly uh, move on to um, the outputs. Chair, uh, we've got four um, uh, types of outputs um, that constitute the 45 uh, outputs. Um, so the we've got core outputs that we spoke about um, uh, at the beginning. Here we measure the performance and transformation of the economy and reflect some of the ultimate objectives we are trying to achieve. We've got 13 programmatic targets that would help achieve um, the aims of uh, core targets, but directly measure the impact of specific activities, including industrial finance, as we've indicated. And then we've got 15 uh, of our outputs that are really enabling uh, outputs. They will enable achievement of programmatic targets by creating the systems and environments that make our activities work. And then we've got um, seven contextual uh, response 
uh, targets um, often involve work outside of our core programs and are designed to respond to the pressing need of the economy um, and to encourage the DTIC to be flexible and agile in the way that um, we do uh, our, our work. So um, the new approach, Chair, as um, I've uh, indicated, um, plans for results and impact and uh, not for audit outcomes. And it's an important uh, point to make because for the first time, uh, notwithstanding the external um, uh, challenges and limitations uh, that our, our um, stretched targets may impose, we have put out those targets. Um, so where there are external uh, uh, challenges, we'll have to deal with it at that point, but in order to improve our own accountability, Instead of putting in inputs where we've got a lot more control, we've gone out and put um, outputs and outcomes uh, uh, in the way that we've set out our uh, uh, APP. Uh, the APP sets out uh, sensitivities, core dependencies, and external factors that may affect our outputs. Uh, you would see the, in the APP we've set uh, some of uh, those, not really as excuses for, for not doing the work, but uh, limitations that um, upfront we are mindful of, that we want the committee to also be mindful of whilst our commitment stays uh, to achieve the outputs that we've set for ourselves. And um, members I'm sure would agree, uh, Chair, that it is ambitious and will require a break um, in the DTIC's traditional ways of working. It also requires that some existing activities be uh, discontinued or reduced to refocus resources on our new priorities. It measures the DTIC plans and focus on uh, functions um, that help us uh, to achieve economic returns uh, against public resources that are invested in some of the work that we do. And it requires active engagement, uh, not just about what has been achieved, but what we are doing, what we are learning, how we are responding, what we possibly are missing, and um, about the quality of decision-making and resource allocation. Uh, it will enable um, the APP to be adjusted in light of experience, opportunities, and new challenges. So um, as Minister would uh, call it, um, it's version 1.0. Um, of the work uh, that we are doing. Um, I think, Chair, uh, perhaps in the, in the next slide, what I can quickly do is just take uh, the committee through what it would take to operationalize the new approach um, that, as I had indicated, has as at its core um, enhancing uh, delivery of services to um, investors, uh, various players uh, in the economy um, in a manner that is resource effective. Number one, dealing with staffing. It's going to require that uh, staff within the DTIC are moved to areas where the core outputs are required to be delivered. And where uh, specialist skills are required, um, we need to have a much more um, agile way of bringing those in so that timing and delivery of those outputs uh, is not compromised. It's going to need us um, to focus on our skills, uh, focus on skills in key areas, including project management, monitoring and um, financial evaluation. Um, vacancies, 25% of our critical vacancies to be filled per quarter based on new skills required. Regarding funding, we're going to reprioritize funding through shifting and um, environments uh, of the budget to the core programs, automation of um, manual uh, customer facing systems and provision of reliable internet capability. Um, consolidation of some of our own programs. Um, members may have noted that uh, going forward, we've reduced from 10 
uh, to nine programs. Uh, this is part of consolidating programmatically, making sure we are breaking uh, silos and uh, we are optimizing our resources. Accommodation. We are now in the process of finalizing our new ops uh, center. And um, that is going to be the area where we will be coordinating uh, implementation, having space uh, for managers to quickly deal and, uh, with issues and resolve uh, problems. And uh, in terms of systems, um, again, you would have noted members that we want to reduce bureaucracy on staffing and finance. And as I had indicated, a more integrated way of working, integrated reporting, both internally and externally of the DTIC. So role of um, our programs, um, of the nine programs, six are core uh, to achievement of the targets. And these are programs uh, focusing on trade, investment and special industrial development, sectors, incentives, uh, exports, competition and transformation. The integrated approach requires that each program contributes outside its traditional core mandate. Um, an example that we've stated on the slides that um, the trade branch will not focus on just negotiation and administration of trade agreements, but will also be required to have a mandate to contribute to jobs, investment, community outreach, and writing up of uh, case studies of impact of trade policies on the lives of South Africans. The sector program targets will be reviewed to shift um, programs from notional or coordinating role to a program of more active frontline company support across <clears throat> the different uh, sectors. So that is just by way of us indicating to you even how the roles within the department um, will be changing, uh, adjusting um, in order to deliver more um, towards this new APP. And then two programs are essential support services to the core programs, administration and research. They provide overall coordination, external stakeholder management, monitoring and evaluation, human resource enabling, finance management, ICT legal, and uh, what essentially are our, our back office or the oil that makes everything run. Um, th those are the, 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 the work that is captured in the two uh, programs. In addition, the administration program through the office of the director uh, general will provide overall support and oversight to all entities that report to the ministry. So in the next slide, I think what we essentially indicate there to members just to show you how um, we will be implementing this um, is just some of the accountability fora within the department um, that will then uh, be set out and uh, the resource allocation to be reviewed and um, uh, engagements with external, uh, with external stakeholders and the adjustment to the organogram that I've already spoken to. Then uh, on cross-cutting focus and gender uh, mainstreaming, an important area in the delivery um, of uh, the DTIC's work program, the APP outputs ensures focus on women empowerment. I'm now on slide 28, so, so no. Women empowerment, gender mainstreaming through the work of the DTIC. We are prioritizing empowerment of women um, as workers, entrepreneurs, managers, and deployment of um, a, a, a targeted resources, use of regulatory powers and coordinating functions to support meaningful participation of designated groups, realignment of procurement practices in order to meet the 40% target of procurement awarded uh, to women-owned uh, enterprises. And uh, we want to also focus on interventions that benefit women indirectly, such as industrial finance, master plans, empowerment funding, export promotion, which benefit sectors which employ large numbers um, of women. So as you can see there, that our focus 
on uh, gender mainstreaming um, is broad but uh, targeted. So cross-cutting focus, um, that's on, uh, on the districts. Um, and here we're dealing with a district development uh, model. Members would have heard me talk about um, the focus that we are going uh, to have in the APP as set out on the um, uh, areas outside the main uh, metros where um, we want to now target services. Now the department will mainstream the DDM model through coordination of the DTIC's work with other spheres of government and with a renewed outreach program, which takes the DTIC's group, uh, the DTIC group services to the 52 districts and metros. The department will allocate all chief directors to districts as district champions for rural and underserved uh, districts. And as you can see there, we start laying out um, those districts and work is already underway to make sure that um, all the chief directors are deployed in all the districts as uh, set out in the slide. And then um, on the APP and the DTIC group, one of the important place of um, uh, delivery in terms of our outputs and um, the APP is ensuring that there is alignment, uh, not just within the, the DTIC on the APP, but between the DTIC and the various uh, agencies of the department. So uh, what we are setting out there is work that has been done to ensure that that alignment uh, takes place. Then um, uh, the slide that follows um, is just a, a slide also that uh, shows as an example, we've taken one um, entity uh, EC, uh, IC. This is the entity that is responsible for insurance of our export um, products. Um, as you can see, the contribution to the DTIC key performance indicators, they are in already showing that they are contributing to the 300 billion in manufacturing of our, uh, exports to the rest of the, of the continent. And you can also see there in their outcomes, 27 billion in um, support program aligning directly uh, to the APP of the department. Then I'll turn uh, to the risks um, assumptions and uh, um, uh, partnerships uh, that are required. And um, here again, uh, members, we are just setting out um, some of the things that may very well affect our ability to achieve um, the work that we've set ourselves out to achieve. Um, the risk of not investing in uh, change management, um, that, 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 that's, a, that's a big one. Uh, that is why we are working very hard to ensure that internally we deal with all of, um, with all of those things. And then um, externally um, uh, is, um, the key assumptions that um, we, we've, un, we've included in our own analysis to come to our targets, global growth, geopolitical factors, new major shocks, uh, energy availability, transport and um, logistics infrastructure, implementation of the AFCFTA. And then of course, there are dependencies that relate to state uh, coordination as set out in that slide. Then I'll uh, quickly deal with some of the external environmental uh, factors. Um, of course, we work within a context where there are, oh, they're, they're, they're municipalities. So to the extent that municipalities are not functional, it also have an impact on our work port infrastructure and logistics, law enforcement and stability to support investment, uh, legal certainty and compliance, timely allocation of resources. Those are some of the areas that we have set out there. And again, um, indicating in terms of the external environment, uh, global and domestic um, environment, reliable supply of energy, efficient um, and responsive uh, visa system. And that is really for the investors. 
a consistent um, water supply for homes and uh, uh, industries and um, supply chain uh, stability. The external environment in this context, um, as I indicated, refers to developments in the global and domestic economy, which may impede or assist the DTIC to meet the outputs uh, target that we have set uh, ourselves. Then I'll just quickly uh, uh, indicate to members our budget, uh, our baseline as members uh, can see um, um, uh, for the three years uh, going forward um, is going to have a little bit of a, a dip in 2024-2025, but then we expect a, a slight increase um, in 2025-2026. Uh, and then we are working now of um, a baseline of 10.2 uh, billion rand um, that is allocated uh, to the department. I think, uh, Chair, with your permission and uh, DM, uh, with your permission, I will stop here, having taken uh, the members largely through our APP, what informs it, uh, the history uh, in terms of its evolution and uh, where we are going um, uh, in terms of um, the, 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 the way forward, some of the challenges that that uh, we may um, uh, come across, but I think the most important uh, being the fact that uh, for the first time we've set out an output uh, uh, driven uh, APP um, that really allows members uh, to be able to hold us accountable and it helps us to focus uh, on the goal and not be lost uh, in the inputs. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, uh, DG. Um, at this stage, then we will open the floor uh, to uh, honorable uh, members, uh, just for the minister logging in, and then, uh, and then, uh, I don't know whether he was kicked out, uh, so I'm logging in. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning to members uh, of the committee, honorable members. Uh, good morning, good morning, uh, honorable minister. Uh, welcome. Uh, Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we are now taking uh, questions uh, from members. Um, we'll allow you and the team then to respond to the questions. Thank you so much. Um, I see the hands already, Honorable uh, Lont, followed by Honorable Moimang, and then uh, Honorable Boshoff, uh, in that order, please. Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning to all the colleagues. Chair, you've seen that I am live, it's nobody else, so I'm going to just take off my video and then go through my questions, please. Okay. Um, I, I do want to start off with, with the compliment. I mean, compared to um, even previous years, but also other departments that have briefed us. I mean, I, it was refreshing how we got the report this morning. Um, and I do want to commend the, the presenter on that. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's start with positive there. And I really hope that that will also translate into outputs. And uh, that is one of my my first remarks um, is the new approach, it, it appears to move in the right direction. Outcomes is needed and that's agreed. Um, I am a little bit worried about the comment that says less focus on audits and then more on the outcomes. Where in fact, it, it can be done, both can be achieved. You can still uh, meet your your requirements and the threshold that you set yourself and get the the um, the ordered outcomes you want and the targets you set yourself. So that that was one concern that just caused a little bit of a red flag. The the timeline to get everything in place for this new approach. Um, what measures are put in place to ensure that it doesn't negatively impact any of the current programs that is currently that's in place. I mean, human beings by our very nature 
resistant to change. And um, I'm specifically worried about the, the staffing section and what pushback there will be and how it might affect the, the current programs and how you would ensure that that um, does not negatively impact anything that currently is ongoing. I, I output 42 um, was mentioned the metal trading system that's developed to identify the stolen public infrastructure, now, which is that's commendable and um, hopefully that can be put in place quite quickly because that adds an unnecessary uh, last burden on, on our fiscus and replacing um, what is already in place to, to service the country. But linked to that, the, the export ban that was put on scrap metal, it seems a bit like a blunt instrument. And now my question is the effectiveness, because we haven't really seen uh, a downturn in vandalism. In fact, um, it, it appears that it has been on the same level or even on the increase. So, so has that been effective? And uh, how do you measure that and determine that? And if not, what other steps are being put in place to maybe to, to address that? I also write at the end, I missed the slide now, but I mean, I know a high level delegation was sent to the states recently, but I mean, our participation in a GOA is at risk and it's all good and well um, having these grand plans. But if we threw our stance on, on the Ukraine-Russian situation, put our participation in something like a GOA at risk that is critical to our economy, wouldn't that then be wise to, to firstly temper the approach and maybe be on the right side of history, but also um, what is being done to make sure and has there been any success in those talks to, to mitigate the risk that we are now, um, our participation in that. Then changes, um, I've got three more, four more points. Um, the, the energy resilience that has been spoken about. Now, my concern is we, we've seen this a few places. How do you ensure that you don't work in isolation? Um, making sure that everybody pulls in the same direction. And there's, there's low hanging fruits. And you spoke about um, taking out the red tape and making sure that the necessary uh, legislative requirements are met. But are you aware of the possibilities that there is around Petro SA and getting that gas trans? Um, uh, gas to energy systems in place. And if you're not aware, um, would you be able to maybe check in on that and make sure that we speed that up? Because that is slowly but surely where you can get areas um, a lot less dependent on, on ESCOM. Um, and that can then be uh, utilized elsewhere. The, sorry, the, the one thing, I, I did give the, the positive comments on the new approach, but on your outputs and jobs created, it is frustrating to get these presentations year in and year out, yet we keep moving backwards in the fight against unemployment. And it, I made a mental note, maybe we should at some stage look at what was promised in jobs, creation, jobs created over the past three, four, five years, and actually then measure it up because ultimately that is how you measure, you measure your success. And, and unfortunately across the bonds, we are failing there. And it's nice putting these figures on the board, but that is one of the critical ones to keep, your, keep yourself accountable. Then the 1.3 billion in financial support, I think it was output 17 or 18, um, to support SMMEs. We had a similar presentation from uh, Department of Small Business Development and how you ensure you don't trip over one another. And critically important, what criteria will you use? Um, I said it to them as well, and I want to say it here. It's much more difficult getting a small business um, started up and operating successfully. And then 
those that have actually crossed those first few hurdles and survived, those should be the one that gets prioritized. Those are the ones that should be mothballed and made sure that, that we, we look after them, they keep the jobs and can possibly expand. Um, and I just want to find out from the department if there's any criteria uh, that you're going to apply to that, or is it something that any small business, irrespective of where you are, how big or small, if you've proven that you established, you've, you've, um, you're creating jobs, you're contributing to the economy, that you are eligible for that. Then um, just your alignment, I touched briefly, but your the DTIC Energy Action Plan, how that will align with the new energy minister and his roles. Um, it, it appears that he doesn't have the full authority, appears that he doesn't have a full job description yet. And, and how much of this will you then slot into what his roles would be and how much of it would, there'll be a territorial fight uh, about who needs to look after what. And then there's one thing that I would appreciate Chair, if you would allow me, there's a there's a um, people that do charity work in the Eastern Cape that have applied for the necessary import permits and they've got containers stuck in Kucha. And if you can maybe put me in contact with the right person, um, so that we can then just close that loop and get maybe those containers through. They've done all the necessary approvals, but that would also be appreciated if um, even if somebody reaches to, out to me offline, that would be appreciated. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Lot. Uh, Honorable Moima. Uh, thank you, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and greetings to the Minister and uh, uh, the team, team of the department, uh, including also the Deputy Minister. Uh, Chair, let me also start uh, by uh, expressing an appreciation uh, from the presentation made, okay, particularly given the, the emphasis uh, that was made to make the select committee appreciate the distinction between the, the previous APP and, and, and the new APP, the criticisms uh, that was identified that we leveled and how the and how the uh, the department has uh, responded uh, to though it is a bit confusing uh, uh, because uh, uh, it talks about uh, the the core outputs and target uh, the, the three outcomes uh, but after the three outcomes it also again talks about the ten core targets uh, and then uh, later it also talks about the ton the 10 core outputs uh, of the 45 outputs uh, which can be quite uh, uh, you need you need you need, you need to be on your toes uh, uh, and minutes that we were to make uh, the, the, those distinctions uh, the only question that i want to ask in relation to these changes uh, our minister will be the the uh, the effect the effect on 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 this uh, given the fact that we only left with uh, with twelve months of the sixth ad, sixth administration. Uh, uh, you remember that the uh, from the the, the sauna, I think. Uh, uh, the take home of the department in in Sona 2023 uh, focused on the on facilitating increased localization, which we agree that is one of the one of the uh, outputs, creating uh, uh, increasing economic growth and employment opportunities, attracting investment, and also increasing trade under under uh, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. An area that is missing. Uh, uh, from the from this uh, ten core targets uh, is the implementation of the master plans, which is one of the priorities uh, that was uh, mentioned in in in, in Sona. Uh, maybe probably I might have missed it. Maybe the team can uh, can give a sense in terms of uh, uh, 
where this is, 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 uh, is located because uh, uh, I think from the previous implementation, uh, an emphasis still has been made on the automatic master plan with regard to the automatics, with regard to clothing and textile, poultry, sugar, agriculture, and global business services. Maybe if there can be more, more elaboration in terms of ensuring that this uh, area also find more, more pronouncement in the, in the 10 core, in the 10 core uh, 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 targets. Uh, that uh, forms an integral part of the of the, of, of the new APP. Uh, as part of the of of of, of, of the uh, uh, special development framework, uh, which uh, in terms of the new in terms of the new uh, APP is combined with the. Uh, with investment, uh, there was a reference to two, two new, two new SDZ. Uh, <clears throat> while uh, uh, we appreciate this new SEZ, uh, it will be important just to probably bring to the fore as to whether this will not have an effect in terms of the the the, 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 the current SEZ that are that are existing. Uh, the bottlenecks that are there, yeah, maybe just in elaboration in terms of where where the spaces that uh, are allocated, given the fact that uh, given the fact that uh, uh, in terms of our mandate, uh, we are more focused on on uh, locals and and provinces. The, the effect of the additional priorities at the level of our provinces and local municipalities. Uh, will do that, and then uh, <clears throat> the third one, uh, uh, chair relates to to uh, the uh, output that speaks to jobs and energy, uh, which is a response to the by the department in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, the crisis that we are faced with. Uh, <clears throat> But we will read the energy action plan of the of, of the department and those eight interventions. Just want to, to raise one point that I that, 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 that I want the the department also to look into. Uh, one of the one of the areas that has been identified uh, as particularly with regard to the to, to the uh, Northern Cape Transmission uh, Development Plan uh, has been the the uh, the capability of the network uh, to handle the the forecasted load and generation uh, in the province over the. Over over over, uh, I mean, uh, over the last uh, uh, few years, uh, <clears throat> the limitation uh, in relation to the infrastructure to evacuate uh, the the energy from the the current uh, renewable renewable uh, uh, plants. Uh, you remember that the first uh, uh, three to four uh, mainly. Uh, were developed around the around the uh, I mean around Northern Cape. So, <clears throat> uh, capacitating or building the capability of the transmission to be able to evacuate uh, this energy uh, uh, can help because uh, if we strengthen it, it will be able to to help uh, uh, the capacity and the ability of the of the transmission line uh, to, uh, to evacuate a large concentration of renewable uh, generation that is anticipated uh, 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 in the province. Uh, <clears throat> there has been an area raised around uh, the, 
a capital investment uh, uh, in relation to in relation to uh, uh, if you make a comparison between uh, the transmission uh, line between Appington and Houghton Province and Appington and Western Cape. Uh, we share, uh, it's an area that I, that, that, that I want to impress upon then start through his uh, uh, the colleagues, uh, both in, at the level of the public enterprise and also the energy department to make an assessment as to whether uh, in terms of the investment, uh, uh, has it been uh, uh, skewed towards the, the, the Western Cape, uh, uh, which, which to a larger degree uh, could, could, could also uh, then, uh, uh, without necessarily, without necessarily uh, pitting province against each other. But I think uh, the, if capital investment uh, to a rather degree was skewed, which could have been the deliberate program of the of of of, of, of the of the board and the previous CEO uh, to ensure that uh, the battery the 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 the, uh, the battery storage uh, uh, has its uh, more biasness towards uh, the recent case. To a larger degree, it has also weakened then the capacity of the of, of the uh, transmission line to be able to evacuate uh, the energy uh, from uh, uh, up in the area to towards county. So it's an area that that, 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 that I want to deposit. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the the last one, uh, Minister, relates to the to the uh, the GDM model. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a slide that speaks to that, and I want to express an appreciation on the part of the on the part of the of, of, of the minister for taking the the first to to Northern Cape. Uh, it was not only just Northern Cape; uh, it was part and parcel of my constituency. So it will be important uh, uh, to 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 express that appreciation because the. The, the the ministry worked hand in hand with the uh, the, the constituency with our constituency officers uh, to ensure that uh, there is that synergy between the work that the department is doing uh, with uh, our constituency officers uh, in the in the in the, in, the, in, the, in our provinces. Uh, the, 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 the other question that I want to, 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 to raise is relates to, to the social uh, employment fund. Uh, it's, 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 it's discontinuation, uh, particularly uh, uh, as an integral part of the uh, uh, pres presidential uh, employment stimulus package. Uh, is there any uh, initiative that will be put in place to augment this? Uh, uh, because uh, uh, it, it, it could have uh, uh, an impact in terms of, or, or, or in terms of, or, on the of the part on the part of the of government to also create jobs. Uh, so uh, if. Uh, uh, an explanation because what is quite clear is that uh, uh, the discontinuation also have an effect in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the work done by uh, the department entities uh, and its commitment to create to create jobs. <coughs> the <clears throat> that question that I want to to, to pose, chair, relates to to the. Uh, the, uh, the the program one, which is administration, uh, the, the the target the employment equity targets uh, in terms of uh, uh, the fifty percent that is uh, no longer applicable in our targets, but also the the three point three point five percent representation of people with disabilities. Uh, how will that help in terms of advancing our agenda of economic equity and economic empowerment? 
and uh, uh, the uh, the planning, the the, the 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 intention to amend the company's act uh, uh, is this uh, uh, given the the, the the limitation on time? Uh, is it a message that uh, the tabling uh, to parliament uh, will happen as soon as we can, as soon as, as soon as possible? Or is it that we say that it will be deferred to the uh, seventh administration uh, and then the, the uh, or on the incentives, the target to facilitate investment from, from investment pledges, uh, the target was 20, uh, was reduced uh, from 26.7 billion in the previous financial year to 25 billion in, in, in 2023. Uh, maybe if uh, an explanation could be given in terms of uh, in terms of uh, this uh, these changes. Uh, 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 other than that, uh, chair, the uh, we are happy with the uh, with the presentation as tabled by by the department. Thank you, chair. Thank you so much, uh, uh, honourable Moima, uh, honourable uh, Basso. Thank you very much, honourable chair, and good. Morning. Yes, it's still morning to everybody and the minister. Um, I'm going to switch off my video for okay. Edward. Um, Chair, for the first time in a few years, I've really enjoyed the presentation. It really is a change from previous ones, and I must congratulate them on a very comprehensive report. However, um, as Honourable Lance said, we can achieve everything in this APP, but unfortunately we sit with an electricity problem. And without electricity, there's absolutely no economic growth and job creation, and um, the market is not conducive for investment. And a capable state will definitely not be achieved under the present climate, but be it as it may, the biggest problem um, South Africans are sitting with, especially the citrus farmers, is the European Union's regulations. And um, I don't see any discussions taking place with this, um, in this regard, by the one where we had a short interaction with the European Union Parliament um, some a month ago. And um, I just want to know if there is any agreement, a renewed agreement um, to put at ease the minds of the uh, citrus industry. And then reading an article the other day, the Department of Land, Agric and Land Reform said they are very skeptical about the EU's citrus import regulations that were resolved at the World Trade Organization that a dispute was lodged last year and still the citrus farmers and everybody do not see um, any work being done towards it. Another concern raised by the citrus farmers um, is the extra cost involved in having to store citrus at longer periods and lower temperature. And um, we, de we did see that previously TPT were not geared to accommodate these new EU re regulations. And what I'd like to know, are we now ready to be able to agree to these regulations or stipulations? And if we could be given a percentage of what the citrus export is and how much story storage cap capacity is available currently, to again put the uh, um, citrus farmers mind at ease. And then, um, sorry, let me just, as everybody says, page from page to page. My colleague also touched on the AGO agreement and um, I'd just like to know where we stand with regard to that because we know since 2000, South Africa has been getting billions of rand, rands worth of discount with regard to trade. 
Then I'd also like to know with regard to the SEZ, where do we stand in relation to the SEZ in Mpumalanga, known as the Nkumazi SEZ? This has definitely been a white elephant or the elephant in the room for that matter. And then on slide 17, output eight, eight billion for financial support of SMMEs, women and youth. What about those with disabilities? Are we not putting aside any budget for them? It's about time that we reached out to them to assist them, please. And then how much of the 8 billion would be channeled towards township SMMEs, especially those in the rural areas? And then on slide 15, output one, 200 billion in investment ple pledges. How have these pledges assisted in the creation of projects and jobs? or how will they assist in the creation of projects and jobs? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Bosov. Honorable Tango. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. I follow, I follow on Honorable Bosov. I was the convener of that meeting with the EU parliamentarians and it was interesting. And as a parliament, we had agreed that we would take this forward. However, I think it is also important that the executive plays its role in that. And its role in the question of agreements uh, that are reached. Now, if we're looking at particularly the citrus thing, they treat North Africa or the, the Mediterranean rim different to the rest of Africa. They don't have those restrictions of the Mediterranean rim. And possibly we should look at the question of most favored nation uh, positions uh, with U Europe. When we're dealing with Europe, if they're dealing with North Africa in that way, then they should be dealing with the rest of Africa and the rest of the world in the same way. However, sometimes I think politics enters into business and it is used as a lever to force people into a particular direction that they need to agree with or not agree with. Uh, the rest of the questions really have been asked by Honorable Moiman and for once Honorable Lont, but he made a very interesting remark. Uh, people are resistant to change. I think some people are still resistant to change from 1994. Um, having said that, uh, Minister, let us look at how we review the trade agreements, uh, including Ag Agoa. Agoa and the chicken dumping uh, situation, uh, where has that gone to? And is it not possible for us to look at the facilitation and funding of NGOs or cooperatives that can actually take advantage of Agoa so we can look at that particular export market? I was listening to an interview on uh, BBC the other night with uh, the Prime Minister of Malaysia. And he was asked the question, uh, what, how do you treat the United States? He said, the United States is our friend. How do you treat China? He says, China is a neighbor and an important friend. We treat them equally, but we have our own sovereignty. And maybe that is the route to go in our own sovereignty and that we don't fall into the trap of being used by either the new Cold War uh, and the non-aligned movement should re-emerge, particularly in the areas of trade. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable uh, Matevola, I want to ask uh, Ms. Matia Solomon to read out your questions, uh, but if you want to give it a try, you can go ahead. Okay, um, Mr. Solomon, can you please uh, read out uh, uh, from the chat? Um, okay, the, the first, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, the, the, the first question from Honorable Matabula is what progress has been made so far in Messina, the Mercado, and Fitahomo Dubatsi SEZ in reaching its final operations? Um, the second question is, what relationship do you have with the Department of Transport to make sure that the roads are close to industrial parks are in good condition and accessible 
in order to attract investors. For example, the road to um, no one Kowa industrial parks, it is in a very bad condition. Um, question number three, in terms of transformation, how many small citrus producers so far has your department assisted in exporting their products? Question number four, what does your department have to promote local brands or encouraging of community members to buy local, local, brand, local brands? And the fifth question is, what is your department doing to prevent counterfeit goods from entering the country? Those are the five questions, Shri. All right, thank you very much. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, for me, um, I think we welcome the ADP. Um, we happy that at least this time around it uh, moves away from uh, measuring the number of reports that are submitted uh, uh, to the minister. Uh, even though we, as members, we don't know the content uh, of those reports, so we really appreciate uh, uh, the new approach. Um, I, I I think, uh, as you were mentioning, the the risks. Um, I think uh, for me, one of the risks is uh, the fact that uh, most people that will be also carrying out uh, uh, the work of uh, these uh, uh, annual performance plans. Uh, about uh, five of them, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, are, are acting, uh, starting from the DG, and, uh, DDG for industrial policy, DDG for competition policy, and the uh, uh, CFO. I think that, that is one of the risks uh, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm identifying uh, in carrying out the annual performance plan. Uh, I think the, the minister need to perhaps uh, uh, assure us that uh, uh, there won't be any negative impact on carrying out uh, the annual performance plans. Um, I, I just want also to check uh, with regard to the 1 million jobs that are supported through master plans. Um, it would have been good if uh, we were to break down uh, these master plans uh, uh, in terms of uh, numbers. Uh, for example, auto, these will be uh, the number of jobs uh, that uh, uh, will come out of uh, uh, that particular master plan. Uh, the issue of energy, most uh, members have uh, uh, raised that concern. We're currently on uh, stage six. Um, we don't know how long, because it is said uh, till further notice. Uh, we don't know how long it will take and also what uh, impact uh, it will have uh, on the uh, plans uh, of the department. Uh, and also the, the megawatts that, uh, which are about 500 plus, I don't think they'll do much in terms of alleviating uh, the problem that uh, uh, we are facing. Um, we we have we are happy that uh, there will be about 15 billion uh, that will be spent outside uh, uh, the five metros uh, because it has always been our concern as members of the committee where whenever we receive a briefing from departments we raise this with the uh, department of transport because uh, in terms of uh, particularly they are rail uh, transport uh, focusing on three corridors which is uh, uh, Gauteng, uh, Western Cape, that is Cape Town, uh, KZN, uh, that is uh, Etiquini. Um, nothing is said about other uh, provinces. Uh, we, we always are concerned uh, that, especially as members of the National Council of Provinces representing the interests of our provinces, we, we get disappointed when Departments uh, are not uh, doing anything uh, in in provinces, especially the rural uh, provinces. Uh, perhaps, perhaps linked to that, uh, there is an issue uh, of uh, the two ECZ uh, or SEZ uh, that will be uh, announced. If, if you can indicate uh, exactly which are those uh, already, Honorable Bishop has uh, indicated the one from Pumalanga that has been always uh, on the queue uh, of uh, uh, the SEZ that are still to be proclaimed. Uh, 
I will also add the, the wild coast uh, from the 10K. It's always been there on the list of uh, uh, the SEZ uh, that are going to be a uh, problem. On the issue of the, uh, are still not clear about uh, the the amounts uh, that uh, the the plans are talking to for it. We've lost you, Chairperson. Example, the issue of a black industrialist, the, the 40 billion. Can you hear me now? Or is it only honorable? Uh, my, my network is unstable. Can you hear me? We hear you now, Chair. Yes, we can hear you, Chair. Oh, okay. I was going to stop and then ask uh, honorable my mind to take over. Okay, let me continue if I can still hear me. I just want to know whether these are assumptions from the part of department or there's also participation by the industrial, uh, 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 black industrialists uh, with regard to the 23 jobs, 23,000 jobs that will be coming uh, from the industrialists. Uh, in, so I want to find out whether the industrialists themselves have a, have a say or it's just an assumption on the part of uh, uh, the department, but also with regard to other uh, 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 amounts, uh, the 700 billion uh, that will be supporting uh, the, the, the manufacturing and also the 300 billion that will be also supporting manufacturing and the uh, export uh, uh, to, uh, to Africa. Um, whether those that will be responsible for that, I mean, to, is it their commitment that, uh, uh, they, that they will do that to the amount of 300 billion and also to the amount of uh, 700 billion, or it's just uh, the, the calculation uh, that has been done within the, the, the department. Uh, on the issue of uh, shares for workers, uh, who's going to pay for the shares? Uh, uh, is it the workers themselves or is the department going to assist uh, workers uh, uh, in buying shares. Uh, <clears throat> also, on the still on the issue of uh, energy, uh, you talk about uh, uh, assisting with the uh, mitigation of the impact of load shedding. In what form is it going to to take place? Um, and then on the issue of um, the the electric vehicle. I understand that the Department of Transport is still busy with the regulations. And on the other hand, the department is finalizing the strategy. I don't know if there is any collaboration between the Department of Transport and the DTIC. Um, in terms of uh, addressing the issue of crime, I see that the focus is on gray listing. Um, and I think one other area. Uh, I just want to find out uh, with regard to illicit trade, what, what measures uh, are being taken uh, by uh, the department or government generally. And uh, also the issue that uh, uh, Honorable Prater said always raise uh, of a so-called uh, business forum, who always uh, uh, ask for 30%. Uh, and if, if they're not given that 30%, then projects uh, won't continue. Um, I think Honorable Boshoff has touched on the issue of uh, uh, the AGOA, uh, the review, how far is the review now? Uh, she's also touched on the issue of uh, the export. Uh, I think there's an issue that, uh, that was raised by the DG uh, with regard that uh, on the plans that uh, uh, the plans should not uh, be done to uh, get uh, a clean audit, uh, mainly um, for edit purposes. Um, uh, I agree with Honorable Elon uh, uh, that you can get the same um, a clean audit, but also carrying out uh, the plan ambitious as they are. Um, I, I just want to find out if, uh, if there is this fear whether there has been any engagement of, uh, with the AG so that uh, they, they know that uh, uh, you have another approach in terms of uh, carrying out uh, the, the, your plans uh, different from previous uh, uh, plans. 
Um, the issue of uh, cannabis, um, there's a concern, uh, especially in areas uh, in the Eastern Cape around the uh, Lusiki Siki, where there's a fear that um, there, there could be outsiders who will be taking over uh, the cannabis from their areas. Uh, to what extent are people in those areas being empowered uh, so that they also uh, play a role uh, in on the issue of uh, the campus? Um, the, the last point um, is on the issue of uh, the, the solar panels. The Minister of uh, Finance uh, announced the, the incentives uh my question at two one is to perhaps whether how is if there is any uptake from the companies and the households uh, with regard to the pvs and and also the manufacturing of those uh, what is the role of the local industry in the manufacturing uh, of the pvs um I think that that that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will then hand over to the minister. Uh, you came at the right time when the uh, members were starting to ask questions, and then it will be up to you on in terms of the approach whether uh, the DDGs will respond to the question, and then you make uh, the closing remarks. Over to you, minister. Well, first, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, and um, may I first start by asking if I can keep my camera off. I'm now in uh, the basement of a building, so you will think I am covered by load shedding. So I will just um, uh, uh, briefly illustrate uh, how dark I have. You can switch it off, uh, Minister. We are already losing you now. Are you able to hear me now, Chairperson? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for the um, the questions, and uh, I would like to um, to first um, <clears throat> uh, thank the committee for uh, the. Uh, uh, matters that uh, that you've raised, and also for the very warm reception that the committee has given to the new format of the annual performance plan. Um, I'm uh, I, I think it's very encouraging. It is a very significant shift uh, in in the uh, plan that the department has historically done, not only in this administration, but in fact, since the advent of annual performance plans. So this is the first time that we've shifted from measuring our activity to measuring the outputs and the impact of the work of the committee. And it was done in spite of all the risks and all the challenges Historically, the department focused on activities because that is what it had control over. And uh, what uh, I have asked the department as we developed the annual performance plan was to be prepared to take some degree of risk in shifting to a better framework. And uh, though there are many things that can go wrong that is outside the control of the department, Nonetheless, if we work hard, there are many things that can go right that we can influence. And we know that um, the South African public is looking for a different way of working. So thank you very much. Each of the uh, honorable members have been very positive about the new approach. And I'm going to um, uh, therefore appreciate Honorable Lont and uh, Honorable Moimang and uh, Omre, uh, Honorable uh, Dango, Honorable Matebula, Honorable Boshoff, uh, and uh, uh, the chair. Now, when I look at the questions, there's about 37 questions that I've counted. I'm going to try where I can to combine questions. I'm going to keep the replies 
fairly short way I can because of the volume of uh, questions. And I do recognize that um, a number of the questions turn more on the operational issues of what the department does generally and what it's done over the past year, whereas the presentation actually year. But the honorable members are right to raise those questions because there's a strong connection between the challenges that there are out in the economy and what the department has to do. So if I start with um, a question that's come up from a few uh, members on uh, the comments <clears throat> that we've made in the presentation on the fact that we, we're now planning uh, for outcomes uh, and not for audits. Now, I'd like to, to just talk that through a little bit because it's an important uh, and in some ways uh, ground shifting way in which we're looking at the work of the department. And I can also clarify what it means and what it does not mean. And I think uh, honorable members will uh, no doubt, I think, uh, find a lot of comfort in, um, uh, in uh, uh, those comments. So let me start by saying that when any department sets its annual performance targets, it normally tries to develop targets that are relatively easy to audit. So they would uh, be what uh, the Auditor General calls smart targets. They are um, uh, measurable, they simple, they generally within the control of the department. But when you're in, an, uh, in a mandate area that is very different, it's a mandate area, something that happens in the Federal Reserve in the United States can impact on manufacturing in South Africa. A war in Europe and the impact that it has on oil prices can impact on manufacturing in South Africa. Uh, a virus in China can impact on manufacturing in South Africa. And so these things mean that uh, typically uh, any department faced with this complexity will play it safe and will go only for those things that it knows can be audited and the Auditor General um, will give it a positive vetting because it's in the control of the department. If we say we're going to have 10 workshops, we generally can control that we will have that 10 workshops. Even if things go wrong in the world, you can have your 10 workshops and you can, it's easy to audit um, compliance with that. But if you say that we're going to uh, seek to get 200 billion Rand in investment pledges, if suddenly there was a new virus that had to hit society, or there was a, um, a major set of um, floods or drought across the country, all of these can affect our, uh, our outcomes. And therefore, whether an audit process will find that we have complied with the objectives and the goals that we've set ourselves. So on slide 24, what the department says is that our plans, meaning the annual performance plan, is driven by the need to get results and impact. We haven't developed the plan so that it is easy for us to tick off in an audit that we've achieved all of our workshops and all of our reports and so on. That does not mean that we don't want to still get a, um, an audit outcome that shows we're using the money of the state and of the South African people responsibly. We have a legal obligation to look after the money carefully. And an audit is really a way of the Auditor General coming back and saying uh, the books of account uh, are a true reflection and uh, the department uh, has um, uh, spent the money in accordance with what uh, is required. But sometimes in our attempt to make sure that we comply completely with every uh, possible prescript, 
we slow things down to the point where very little gets done. It's a challenge that many different people have raised in different parts of the administration. And it's one that the Auditor General has to look at a higher degree of robustness in how audits are conducted. This, by the way, has come up uh, from, uh, gov uh, from government at national level. It's come up from governments. For example, the Western Cape government has raised the same thing. Uh, it's come up wherever we have public entities. So it's not a matter where one political party has a view. I think everybody who's in governance recognizes that danger. We do need, we absolutely do need a strong and effective audit. We do need to ensure that we comply with the requirements that we have in, um, in that respect. But at the same time, our principal focus must be on ensuring delivery uh, to South Africa's people. So in moving with speed, we've got to be able to make sure that we record and clearly document everything that we do and we are able to explain it. But the mindset mustn't start with compliance. The mindset must start with delivery. And then we must have, we must comply in the process of focusing on delivery, as opposed to uh, a, a mindset that is focused in the first case, just on uh, a, a kind of blind compliance tick box mentality. So I still want the department to have a, a unqualified audit. I would still want every single cent that uh, has been voted uh, for the budget of the department to be accounted for and to be used wisely and prudently. This is public money and um, we need to account for that. So I hope that that explains that um, we, we want a, an approach and we want the Auditor General to also um, work uh, uh, with us in ensuring that we, uh, we account properly, uh, that we, we do, uh, in fact, um, uh, meet our audit obligations. Uh, Honorable uh, Lont asked the question, the timeline for the new approach, we're kicking in immediately. I've now had, I think, uh, uh, though... It is only the 9th of May. Uh, the DG will tell you that we've probably had about um, six separate meetings, if not more, on delivery in the new approach. And we've already uh, achieved um, some of the outputs, not the full ones, but uh, on some of them, we're already able to see uh, a positive uh, uh, approach and the the reason we've been able to do that, Honourable Lond, is we started to experiment with this approach, even under the old APP, and so Honourable Members will um, will know that uh, we do uh, on a quarterly basis uh, provide a report to the Portfolio Committee, and in that Portfolio Committee meetings, I've made the point that we're shifting to an out uh, output and outcome based. A reporting system. Now we've made sure the plan catches up with our reporting system and the plan also reflects that. It's a, it's a good point, uh, Honorable Lon, that change management is an important element of working differently. And um, it will take time to get every single of the uh, 1,200 staff uh, uh, retrained where training is needed or refocused where it is. And in the more detailed document, uh, we set out some steps, including staff training that every chief director is expected to do uh, to ensure that, um, uh, in fact, we address uh, that important part. If you look at slide 25, uh, we indicate the issues like reassignment of human resources, provision of sp uh, specialists, focus on skills in key areas. Um, and so on. So we recognize that uh, the, the drivers of the new approach will be staff. And uh, I think some, some staff already very clearly in the new approach. And we're working hard to bring everybody on board. 
On uh, slide 42, on the metal trading regime, we're constantly evaluating the um, uh, effectiveness of all the measures we've put in place. And uh, we will be, uh, I, I will be applying my mind to the information. Of course, one of the things that we do take into account is there was an overhang of uh, export permits that had been granted prior to the introduction of the temporary prohibition. And we did not cancel those. So for a period, they were still uh, being exported. So all of this is under careful consideration at the moment. On um, matters of AGOA and the relationship with the United States, Honorable Lontes raised it. It's also come up uh, from Honorable Dango uh, and uh, uh, um, Honorable Chai. And let me state that the economic relationship with the United States is very important. It's a big market for us, uh, not only for raw materials, but also we export a significant uh, uh, quantity of manufactured products to the United States. It's also a market for, from which we draw uh, foreign direct investment. There are American companies in the South African economy uh, that uh, indeed assist in ensuring that we, um, we uh, meet our industrialization goals and help to employ uh, South Africans. And it's a two-way thing that the United States also benefits from the economic relationship with South Africa. Of course, it's a much bigger economy and it's got, um, so in relative terms, uh, it's, a, it's a, um, a more, uh, it's a, the United States impact in our economy is very large. I can't claim that for South Africa, but I do want to make the point, we are a significant supplier of critical minerals uh, that go into the United States manufacturing base. So it's in the interest of, uh, of South Africa to maintain that relationship and to ensure that we are able to attract American investment and we can have uh, a strong trading relationship too. Uh, as we navigate all the complexities of a more fractured, a more polarized world, our national interest, the interest of South Africa, is to focus on how we can create jobs and how we can expand the size of the economy and give more opportunities to small businesses and young people. And that means that uh, in the opportunities there are uh, across the world, uh, in our economic relationship uh, with uh, uh, countries in Asia, uh, with countries in, um, uh, in Europe, all of those are important opportunities. Our focus now in making sure that we can create more jobs and expand the economy and create more uh, economic inclusion is to deepen the trading relationships with the rest of the African continent. And the uh, African continental free trade area is a significant part of that. We are in discussion with the United States. We've had a number of meetings. And of course, that conversations continue. Um, and we're not only looking at the short-term issues of AGOA, but also the longer-term issues of AGOA. In respect of um, matters relating to uh, Petro SA and the challenges there, Honorable Lont, um, I'm going to request that one of the officials just reach out and see what specifically the challenges are that uh, you are drawing attention to. On the output in jobs, it is a reality in um, uh, market economies that you have both job growth and uh, you have job, uh, job losses. For this year, we've introduced, a, for the first time, a measure where the department will uh, focus on jobs as an explicit target. And so it will look at new job growth. And it will look at stabilization of existing jobs. I hope in future years uh, that as uh, the department builds on this annual performance plan, it would eventually be able to look at the net effect 
in other words, job growth, less job decline to see the, the net effect of it. Uh, but this year, as the first step in bringing jobs as an explicit uh, area, we're looking at um, uh, output, uh, um, we're looking at the jobs, uh, the gross numbers. I'm going to jump for a moment to the uh, to a jobs-related question that Honorable Khai, the chairperson, raised on the one million jobs. And I want to make the point, really two points, that it's one million jobs that are either supported by DTIC programs or that are covered by master plans. And we draw that distinction. I mean, we've just kept it very short in the main descriptor in the document for ease of reading. But to give an example, we would have a master plan in the clothing industry. And that master plan would cover uh, a number of workers uh, in, uh, in that uh, industry. But we would also have a, an agreement, for example, with uh, a company called PepsiCo that they would not retrench workers um, or reduce their headcount, the number of employees they have for a certain number of years. Now, that's not a master plan connected uh, metric or measurement. That is a competition uh, linked one. And um, so we're taking all the different programs of the DTIC, not just master plans. And uh, uh, the aggregate, the total effect of all of that must be that uh, our, uh, our various measures must cover uh, at least a million uh, jobs. Uh, turning back to Honorable uh, Lon's question on um, the 1.3 billion rand for small and medium enterprises, we want to complement the important work done by the Department of Small Business Development. And uh, we are finalizing criteria. Some of the detail uh, will be made available uh, publicly. Um, but we've provided in the, uh, in the APP a sense of some of the key elements of that energy uh, resilience uh, plan. It is only a stepping stone. It's not a final solution to the energy issues uh, because it's a stepping stone to help companies in this particular period who are vulnerable. Um, we're not going to be able to cover every small uh, and medium enterprise. And so the criteria that uh, will be announced will help to, uh, to focus those to a greater extent. Uh, the energy measures that we put in place uh, are in support of what the Minister of Electricity is doing. And um, uh, my colleague there, uh, Minister Ramokhopa, has a big responsibility. And our contribution is a relatively small part of helping uh, him and uh, the rest of cabinet uh, meet the energy plan. We could take the view that because energy falls under other departments, we as the DTIC should only focus on our core mandate. But the truth is that our core mandate is affected by energy. So we're putting in place a target of new investment we want to get into energy. We're putting in place an energy one-stop shop to help uh, private sector companies who are battling to uh, navigate the regulatory requirements of the South African environment when they want to supply us with energy. For example, a, a company that wants to put up wind energy in the Eastern Cape or solar energy in the Northern Cape often don't know the, uh, the regulatory uh, challenges and uh, we're building a team in the DTIC in this one-stop energy shop to assist. So all of that can help the Minister of Electricity in meeting uh, his important set of targets. Uh, I again will ask um, uh, an official to reach out on the matter of uh, the containers a number of charities have um, uh, in the past imported uh, a product and um, 
Uh, what we have not uh, generally encouraged is the importation of secondhand clothing, but there's been many other instances where charities have done good work in society and they've, they've imported other kinds of products. So um, we, we will ask the DG to get an official to talk uh, to the Honorable Member. Uh, on Honorable Moimang's uh, questions, thank you very much. We have 12 months left of the sixth administration. Uh, some of the work that we've done in the last few years that have been very positive were not captured in the annual performance plans. They were maybe more put into the reports that came to the ministry. And as um, uh, honorable members have said, they're not privy to those reports. And so what we're doing is we're putting it all out there in the open, transparently, uh, so that we can measure. So it's not that the work in the sixth administration will only start now. Uh, I have just come back this morning from uh, a launch that we've planned now for two months ago already of the localization support fund, where, for example, Coca-Cola put 240 million ran up to help localize uh, uh, products in the South African economy, not Coca-Cola products, any product. Uh, so small businesses and others can work on it. For example, that fund is now looking at medical devices. It's looking at furniture uh, and it's looking at renewable energy components. Um, they've been joined by a company called Airliki that has made 100 million rand available for a similar uh, project by Heineken that has made 200 million rand available. And so we're seeing very positive examples on the localization side, that is very good. Uh, Honorable Moe Mang, it is uh, true that the master plans are not in the 10 uh, core output areas. And there's a very good reason for that. The master plans are in the annual performance plan. But what we've done is we've separated out uh, things that are activities, from things that are outputs. Now, in a master plan, a typical output of a master plan would be to increase investment. So what we've done in the core output, we have investment as a core output. And that 200 billion rand uh, is going to be made up, among others, of our successful work in master plans in getting companies to make commitments. A master plan like the clothing master plan is focused on increasing local content and local production. And I see that um, Honorable, Honorable Matebula uh, made a, a good point about supporting local fashion. And um, what we will then do is when the clothing master plan achieves its um, uh, outputs, that will go into that 40 billion rand additional local output that is in the core area. When we make cars, which is covered by the auto master plan, then we export a lot of those cars. They will help to go into the 700 billion rand in manufacturing exports. So this is how in that dashboard of 10 core targets, it will cover a lot of the impact and outputs uh, of the master plans. Uh, on the question of the SEZs that um, two members have asked, two honorable members have asked about the SEZs, we have a number of different uh, SEZs that are uh, vying for designation where provinces have put up uh, their hand and have put forward uh, their SEZs. We're in the process of finalizing it. I hope that I would be able in about two weeks' time, uh, or certainly uh, not later than three weeks, uh, to make an announcement in respect of one of the two special economic zones. The reason why it's taking a different uh, uh, um, form, in the past we used to just announce in, uh, at the start of the year what are all the SEZs we're going to do in a year. Now we do it differently. Now we make sure that we recheck the business plans of um, special economic zones 
that we bring in proper governance arrangements, that we get provinces and municipalities to co-fund uh, within their means. Because our example of a number of other SEZs and honorable members have asked questions about those SEZs have been that the old model of SEZs is not always been a good model. The old model is one where it's largely a provincial competence. The DTIC historically was just the, um, the funder. We had no say over anything else. And at the start of this administration, we said, no, no, we must change that. So we experimented with a new approach in the Swani SEZ. We said the DTIC wants to have people on the board. We want to have a co-say on uh, the um, project manager for the SEZ so that we don't have poorly qualified people appointed, uh, that we want to see an investment case with commitments by investors to uh, additional uh, production. And that is what we do now. And so for all of the questions that have been asked about uh, Kumasi and um, the other SEZs, the answer really is that some of those SEZs have really battled because they didn't have proper business plans in place. Uh, in Musina Makado, we've had many problems with uh, the environmental impact uh, assessment area. So uh, I'm happy that the department could be invited to take the select committee in future through some of those challenges and difficulties. So if um, it so pleases the uh, select committee to uh, have that on its program, then I would like the director general and the special economic unit, uh, special economic zone unit to do a presentation uh, on uh, those uh, ones, including um, Fetahomo Tubatsi. I'm moving to the question that was asked about jobs and energy. There is an important relationship and we do need to resolve the energy challenge to be able to unlock more job uh, creation. But even as we rebuild our energy infrastructure, that can also be a source of additional job creation, including on localizing the component supplies that are used in, um, in energy. Honorable Moi Mang raised uh, an important point about capital investment. Uh, I don't see a trade-off between transmission lines to the Western Cape and transmission lines to the Northern Cape. We need transmission lines to both areas because energy needs to be available across the country. And um, a lot of um, the um, work that we do uh, is helping to unlock opportunities uh, in different parts of the country. So we've brought in now the district development model as a very important discipline on all of us uh, in order to ensure that we don't neglect uh, some parts of the country. Uh, on uh, battery production, it's an area we're looking at carefully. While we do look at issues of minerals, it's also having uh, uh, researchers and other qualified technical personnel uh, available in South Africa and in the areas where this is uh, developed. Uh, Honorable Moemang, I'm happy. Uh, that we had, uh, in fact, piloted the new uh, outreach program. We want to do at least 52 uh, outreach visits. We've done the first one in the Northern Cape, uh, and uh, we've learned some very good um, uh, lessons on how we, we can do this even better as we go to other districts. On the Special uh, Employment Fund, obviously, uh, this is a, a budget-related matter, and it, uh, we are waiting uh, to see that we get uh, some progress uh, there with uh, uh, funding that National Treasury can make available. We covered for this financial year, but from next financial year, uh, we would need uh, more uh, of, of that. It may be very good for the, um, the, uh, um, the work of the Select Committee that the select committee in doing oversight could also look at some of the uh, these examples are in the special employment fund, uh, social employment fund. And I would be, of course, appreciative of 
additional support that the select committee expresses for strengthening uh, the resource allocation uh, uh, in this area. On the agenda of broad-based economic empowerment, it goes to issues of skills development. So many of the uh, provisions in the past relating to matters like um, uh, affirmative uh, 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 goals that have been set are within the domain of the Department of Employment and Labor. Uh, what we focus on uh, is uh, very strongly uh, the uh, area of ownership, the area of um, uh, ownership in the past was about trying to get the Black South African to have 5% or 15% of an existing company. Uh, we said, no, no, we've got to focus on bringing more Black South Africans to open their own businesses, to become industrialists, to learn in the market. The market is a hard place. Not everybody who opens a firm will succeed. Government can't guarantee that someone won't fail. It will require those um, entrepreneurs to be able to do it. Um, but we hope many of the firms will survive. And even those who fail, that the, um, the entrepreneur has learned some valuable lessons when they pick themselves up and start, uh, uh, start all over again. Because we've got to increase the number of successful firms in the economy. On the Companies uh, Amendment Act, it will come to the uh, NCOP as soon as uh, it's been considered uh, by uh, uh, the, uh, it rather I should say, it will come to Parliament as soon as it's been considered by Cabinet. Uh, Honorable uh, Boshoff, um, the electricity challenge is important, which is why there are eight actions that the DTIC is focusing on, even though we're not a electricity department per se, but we must make our contribution. We have had and will continue to have quite significant engagements on citrus with the EU, uh, certainly more than 10 meetings at the level of officials, heads of state, minister level and others. Um, most recently, we met with the president of Finland and uh, we raised the citrus matter and that was something of the order of uh, two weeks ago. So this is quite a big area. And um, uh, we, we are looking at all the areas, uh, Honorable Boshov, that you've raised. Obviously, the DTIC uh, works very closely with DELRAD, the Department of Agriculture, Rural Development and Land Reform, who would be responsible much more for the, um, the supply chain, uh, including all the key elements of it. Uh, and it goes also to the question uh, that was put uh, by Honorable uh, Matebula around support for small citrus fruit, fruit producers, which is done by the Department of Agriculture. Our job as the DTIC is to support that department in its, um, uh, in its work, and we bring knowledge of trade law uh, on the issue. Uh, I've covered the issue of the Nkomazi SEZ, uh, by saying that uh, we'd be happy to do a, um, a more detailed uh, update on where we are with the different special economic zones. Now, Honorable um, Boshov has raised the question uh, around the 8 billion rand. Um, and uh, yes, of course, uh, so on people with disability, we do have um, uh, a, in our criteria, we do take that into account. Uh, but I should clarify both for Honorable Boshoff as well as for a question that was uh, posed, uh, I think it was by the chairperson, uh, if I recall, on the, um, uh, the, uh, the monies. We don't, that's not a budget allocation as in we're going to give that sum to um, a, um, a separate fund for women. What it is, is we have the money that the DTIC has. We use the balance sheet of the IDC. So the IDC borrows money from the financial sector in South Africa, and it puts up as, um, if you like, 
uh, as a guarantee of payment uh, its balance sheet. So uh, we don't really get money from National Treasury. We have not had it uh, since the start of uh, the democracy. In fact, even decades before that, we expect the IDC to, um, to uh, run a, a profitable uh, business as a DFI. And the profit it makes on shares that it has in, um, in large companies, the dividends is then used to fund development. And so companies are able to uh, apply for funding and we then try to uh, make sure that we have a number of applications from women, from young people, people with disabilities, uh, and um, uh, outside the metro areas and so. At the end of the day, those applications must still meet the fund criteria. And so uh, we will be reporting regularly on how well we do in achieving the 8 billion rand target. So I hope I've also been able to explain that the money doesn't get channeled directly to a township, but it depends on the soundness of the business case that comes in from uh, township entrepreneurs when they apply for funds. We are trying to strengthen the capacity of the agencies of the DTIC to help um, applicants to strengthen their business cases. On the 200 billion rand in pledges uh, and how past pledges have assisted, well, let me give a few quick examples, Honorable Boshoff. If um, uh, uh, the honorable member watches Netflix, uh, then I should say that the films that uh, are uh, that comes through Netflix come via fiber optic cables. Those fiber optic cables link South Africa to other key parts of the world. One of the big uh, investment announcements that was made by Google was to lay an undersea cable uh, that connects West Africa, South Africa, and uh, Portugal. And that undersea cable is one of the ways in which Netflix uh, movies uh, or Zoom meetings uh, with people in other parts of the world take place. Let me take another example. Every time an honorable member gets into a Toyota uh, a Corolla Cross or a C-Class Mercedes or a Ford Ranger Bucky or an Isuzu Bucky, then those have been done through the investment pledges that have been made. Those investment pledges have resulted in uh, these important uh, projects being done. Every time uh, we've had any member of parliament um, uh, vaccinated uh, for uh, COVID-19, then the, uh, if the, if the J&J vaccine was used, then that would have come from a factory in South Africa that was a result of an investment pledge. Uh, every time an honorable member goes to hospital for an operation and is placed under an, an anesthetic, uh, <clears throat> that anesthetic is now produced in South Africa as a result of the announcements that were made uh, in the pledges. Every time I, I use a phone to make a phone call, uh, that phone call is routed through either MTN or Vodacom or one of the other companies' wires, and that would have come about, they would have upgraded those uh, cell towers, uh, I should say wireless, not wires, uh, the, the cell towers, and all of that would have been... Um, uh, uh, um, upgraded as a result of announcements made at the investment conference. And I can go into food that has been produced as a result of that, or mining products, uh, or in fact, uh, steel products, a range of other products. So, so that's not plans, that is what has already happened and that we are already consuming. Turning to Honorable uh, Dango's uh, questions, um, there are uh, uh, very good uh, questions, Honorable. Uh, Dangos raised the issue around the EU and Citrus, which uh, was also raised by uh, Honorable Lont. And um, I, I should make the point that 
the most favored nation principle applies to uh, uh, the treatment of countries, for example, on uh, tariffs. Now, with sanitary and phytosanitary standards, in uh, international trade law, you can apply those selectively where you have evidence of a problem, of a sanitary or phytosanitary problem, a plant uh, health problem, an animal health problem. We've taken, we've made the point publicly, and we've made the point to the EU that the European Union is misusing the sanitary and phytosanitary standards, that they're targeting South Africa in part because our um, exports have become so successful. We are now the second largest exporter of citrus fruit in the world, just behind Spain. And uh, in our view, this is narrow protectionism of Spanish farmers. It's got nothing to do with um, uh, the problems that the EU says it is. It's about protecting jobs in Europe. And so we're trying to um, work through this matter through a combination of having to deal with it via the World Trade Organization. But we also, because we have a relationship with the EU, we're going to first exhaust every means to see if we can persuade uh, the EU to shift course before we have to go the final route. On the matter of Goa uh, and chicken dumping, the European, uh, the United States, um, the United States, some years ago, uh, was able to uh, get a um, agreement with South Africa that a certain quantity of poultry products are allowed into South Africa free of an anti-dumping duty. And that facility is only in place as long as a goa is in place. So um, that was done to take into account the preferential access that South African products also have to the U.S. market. Uh, we, we can look at um, uh, uh, encouraging the Department of Small Business Development to uh, support NGOs and co-ops in accessing the American market. There's some very interesting examples of small and medium-sized companies that are benefiting from that trade. And um, uh, it is true that it's not in South Africa's interest or Africa's interest for a new Cold War. We need to work with all parts of the world. We need to focus on jobs and economic development in uh, South Africa. And so we sell products to China, we sell products to the United States, and um, both of those economic relationships are, are vital and they are important uh, uh, for us. Uh, Honorable Matebula asked uh, uh, a number of questions. I've tried to, to respond uh, to some of those in the course of dealing with um, uh, uh, other uh, matters. Uh, and. Um, uh, on Musina, Makado, and uh, Fetahomo to Batsi, I would suggest that because it's a more detailed reply, we could uh, offer at the convenience of the select committee to, uh, to give a deeper briefing. And I will ask uh, the department and the SEZ unit to be available for that. Uh, on uh, Department of Transport, this is a matter that um, provinces are responsible for to deal with the, the infrastructure uh, around um, uh, industrial parks. And it would be um, uh, uh, very good that um, uh, provincial uh, authorities are also uh, encouraged through the, uh, uh, the work of the select committee to address precisely the problem that uh, uh, has been raised uh, by Honorable Matebula. Of course, the DTIC also tries to see where it can uh, uh, pressurize uh, players to move quickly, but the budget allocation for many of those roads, uh, from my uh, understanding of it, goes to provinces, and um, uh, and and so we need to unlock uh, that more on citrus fruit. I've indicated the important work of Dalrad and how we help them on the promotion of local brands or encouraging community members to buy local brands. We. Uh, sponsor we are the government department that sponsors and supports the proudly south african campaign but in addition to that when we had the black industrialist conference 
in July last year, we had a whole section displaying South African fashion and um, South African <clears throat> uh, brands um, on uh, fake goods uh, coming into the country or counterfeit goods coming into the country. We work with SARS. It's a legal responsibility that SARS have, but we, we've created hotline tip-offs and so on that the industry provides SARS with information. And periodically, SARS uh, seizes these goods and um, uh, work with us uh, on uh, this issue. I think I've covered those five questions, and I can see that Honorable Boshoff says she has very little time uh, to watch uh, TV. But I must say then, Honorable Boshoff, even for Zoom meetings, if there are global Zoom meetings, perhaps with counterparts in the European Parliament, that same infrastructure will be used. So I'm sure you'll celebrate the outcome of these investment conferences with us. Honorable Chai, um, on the acting positions, we have reduced the number of programs. Uh, we, are, we have now scoped out uh, those ones. So we want to work on uh, filling some of the vacant posts. But we, we're also creating a fit-for-purpose DTIC that um, uh, has a leaner, uh, smaller uh, structure and that we utilize all the available staff uh, in the areas that is outward looking uh, and that um, uh, we progressively shift work to the new priorities that we've identified here. On the um, spending outside of metros, I've covered how that will happen. It depends on the applications, but we're giving an important signal to the market by saying we're going to spend as much outside these five metros. This number of jobs uh, that Eve Black Industrials, that was our target. Have 1 billion, 10 billion, or 20 billion rand over a five year period. But that's an input, that's not an output. It may be the output of the um, branch. But it's an input because we only support black industrialists because those companies produce, they employ people. And so we're shifting the focus here. And so those numbers have come about from uh, the exercise we've done, the modeling exercise we've done of the black industrialists that we work uh, with, how many jobs uh, are uh, in, in those and how we can make sure that those job numbers don't drop and indeed. Uh, that we can increase them. On the exports, that those are enormous sums of money, 300 billion rand to the rest of the continent, 700 billion rand uh, to the rest of the world uh, as uh, total manufacturing exports. So those are not commitments by companies. That is the DTIC must create an enabling environment that can help to drive South Africa's successful export efforts. On the shares for workers, do the workers pay? The answer, Honorable Chai, I know as chairperson, you'll be very happy to know. No, the workers don't pay. Does the department pay? Uh, I, I think you'll be even happier, uh, Honorable Chai, to also know uh, the department don't pay. So what we do is we create funding mechanisms using uh, different kind of models. For example, PepsiCo donated the entire money directly to a workers' trust. And that workers' trust uh, then is able to buy the shares. Uh, companies uh, like um, uh, Heineken or Coca-Cola uh, would uh, structure a deal. It's called vendor funding, where the dividend flows that come from these funds, um, that comes to the funds, the profit on the shares is used, a portion of that profit goes directly to the workers and a portion goes to pay off the loan that, uh, that has been made. Um, on the question of uh, energy, how will we implement the 
uh, energy measures of the DTIC. Some of them are localization of, so for example, we've supported uh, that um, more companies produce the components here in South Africa. Um, but there's a good example of how we've addressed the energy issue where the DTIC unblocked a big company uh, that had um, uh, uh, an energy challenge where they generate the spectre. We were able to step in and help to ensure that we uh, are able to um, uh, significantly mitigate the risk of those workers being laid off. Now, one of the honorable members asked the question, uh, is there an example of how we uh, these investments create jobs? And last year, I had um, uh, uh, invited President Ramaphosa to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to visit a local factory in Kuadukuza. Uh, he had been invited uh, also by the company and I'd encouraged the president to go. And in that massive facility that had come out of a commitment that that company had made previously, there were 4,000 workers just in that one facility, producing the wire harnesses that go into, into cars uh, uh, in the um, uh, production sites of different big automakers in the Eastern Cape, in KZN and in Gauteng. Um, on the matter of um, uh, electric vehicles, yes, we are coordinating with the Department of Transport on illicit trade. I've covered that to say that we work closely with uh, the South African Revenue Service SARS on it. Uh, Goa, I've covered that. On um, uh, audits, the Auditor General will still, of course, continue to audit the uh, work of the department. And um, we will work very closely uh, with the Auditor General uh, on cannabis. This is driven by the um, uh, Department of Agriculture rural development and land reform. But Deputy Minister Gina has also been asked to um, uh, be uh, responsible in the ministry uh, to support the efforts of uh, the uh, Dalrad colleagues. And um, so DTIC is also bringing uh, some support there. And um, uh, it would be good to make sure that the message that Honorable Hai has given is conveyed uh, both uh, to uh, uh, Dalrad and also that it's uh, drawn to the attention of uh, Deputy Minister on um, the uh, solar panels uh, and the, uh, the tax incentives. The important part um, uh, of what we do is to ensure that we can produce locally. Obviously, we don't produce on sufficient scale uh, the kind of size that China has. So that results in local products in some areas being more expensive. And so we've got to, the way to bring the prices down is to scale up production, which means we need a very predictable renewable energy program so that companies can uh, carefully plan their production. You can't have stop-start production. Uh, that's not um, a helpful way to bring down your costs. And um, uh, there are, of course, also um, foreign direct investors, for example, in wind, and certainly one of the two solar panels, the PV panels, have a um, investor, a uh, foreign investor, and one uh, uh, is a South African company. So um, I'd like to, Chairperson, uh, conclude on that and also uh, appreciate the, um, uh, the questions that were posed by the committee. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Minister. I think there's one question that we refer to one of uh, the directors uh, with regard to the question of uh, Honorable uh, uh, launch on uh, some of the stuff to stuck at one of the ABAPs. So, Chairperson, I had suggested, but I'm in your hands that they can just reach out to um, Honorable Lont to get all or outside the, the platform. Outside the platform, yes. Oh, oh thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, maybe uh, Honorable uh, 
uh, Minister, we are running out of time. Some of us are still in the villages. We have a hybrid session. We need to quickly drive uh, uh, to Parliament. Uh, for me, it's the first time this year uh, that I'll be in the precinct of Parliament. Uh, I would uh, therefore request if you can uh, uh, make a, a closing remarks, and then we close. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. My closing remarks will be very brief, both because the uh, NCOP uh, members have other responsibilities, but also this has been an extensive and a very, very good session. We know, uh, honorable members, that uh, the approach that we've adopted is a new approach. We will look for your understanding as we learn some ways, some new ways as we implement this. Uh, we hope we will achieve a lot of the the good things that's in the annual performance plan where we make mistakes. We want to be able to own up to those mistakes and learn from them where we succeed. We'd like all of the members of parliament from all political parties to help celebrate that because South Africa uh, succeeds when um, uh, any of us succeed. So if the DTIC is able to achieve some things, it's one that all South African uh, South Africans can celebrate. So thank you very much, Chairperson. I'd like to thank also the um, uh, staff, the DG uh, and her team uh, for the, uh, the hard work that is put into implementation of the annual performance plan. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable Minister. And uh, also thanks to the uh, Deputy Minister who was here earlier, uh, who made uh, also opening remarks. Um, thanks to the honorable members who have uh, attended the meeting and uh, also we appreciate their participation. We thank uh, the DG, uh, the DDGs, uh, staff of the committee, staff of parliament in general, and the media. Um, I see there's a note that says uh, some uh, outstanding questions should be sent in writing. I thought that uh, uh, all the questions have been dealt with. Uh, but if uh, not, uh, the committee secretary can uh, make uh, those uh, outstanding questions uh, to the department and then they will be responded to in writing. Um, as I said, uh, we are now rushing to uh, parliament uh, uh, for the plenary session that starts at two. Uh, thank you very much, uh, everybody. Uh, the meeting is adjourned and uh, goodbye.